Hello everyone, greetings, salutations on another stream that's not too early, but not too late. So <laughs> that's always great. Wow, uh, so I did not expect to get so many questions. Um, oh, I always think it's so sweet um, after a stream and stuff that you guys um, come to me with uh, questions to elaborate on stuff because for the most part, I always think that I'm like talking into the void of things. Um, and so when the void talks back, I'm always <laughs> like a little shocked. So, but I, of course, I always uh, appreciate it when you guys like reach out uh, for a bit more of an elaboration of like our discussions and stuff. Um, but first of all, how are you guys doing? How's everything going? How's your week? It is a wonderful Monday today. Um, I never know what day of the week it is. I always have to look at my calendar that's like right in front of me. Um, and funny enough, like the calendar is always like a day late anyway, so I have to think forward. But um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, thank you for all of you guys that uh, were curious into like finding uh, cross stitch patterns and kind of resources for that, like uh, how to get started. I always recommend um, if you are going to be a beginner, I guess this is like the first question to answer because. Um, I learned cross stitching from my grandma like it was just something like oh hi spooks how you doing oh goodness oh I'm so sorry about uh your wisdom teeth oh man uh like you already got them out so you're are you in a happy place are you in a better place now oh geez I'm sending all the healthy vibes your way I hope you don't mind we're going to be talking a little bit about cross stitching and then we're going to talk about our favorite couple on the internet uh, because I was streaming uh, yesterday. Yeah, Ooh, time is a complicated concept for me. Um, so we were talking about that and um, a lot more questions popped up. And so I was going to elaborate a little bit on where uh, the Hollis couple is on the internet and kind of elaborate on all of their craziness. Uh, because they popped off on the internet, um, each of them in their separate accounts, and mostly because Dave came out with a book. That's, like, what I was getting into. That's how, like, the stream started, but then people were genuinely curious about the whole drama with them, so I'm just gonna, at least on this stream, explain a little bit of that, get into a little bit of cross-stitching um, for the start, but I hope you're doing good and you're healing and, and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so I learned cross stitching from my grandma and, uh, she did it like the really old school way, like where, like it didn't even have, uh, the Ida cloth, like, um, so Ida cloth, it's basically, um, where it already has like the pre-made, uh, you can almost call them like a uh, texture to like where it's already, uh, kind of neatly punctured into the cloth. And so it's, uh, easier to, this is like kind of, um, when you already have a pattern, for example, it's a lot easier to keep your crosses like neat and stuff. Um, oh, okay, so we can talk a little bit. Uh, oh, Jess says, uh, thank you. I'm doing okay. My face hurts a little bit, but I've been healing up all. Oh, oh, that's great. Yeah, I've heard at least, uh, cause my brother got his wisdom teeth pulled out, uh, like a couple years ago. And he was, they gave him some happy pills just to, like, keep him, keep him going. But, yeah, I just know with that, uh, talking's a little difficult. And, um, like, at least for, he drank a lot of smoothies and a lot of mashed potatoes for a while. But I really hope, uh, yeah, because they even have, like, funny enough, I don't know why I think because I'm thinking of stitching. But, like, like, where it dissolves and stuff, that happened to him, like, because... Like, I always thought it was kind of, like, sutures and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I just know you have to, like, just be careful with, like, eating and stuff. But I'm glad that you're feeling better and uh, you're in a good road to recover. Yeah, so stitching with this, this is, like, I always recommend if you are going to go into it to get the kits first. Uh, because a lot of the times, like, uh, the kits, it's easier because it comes with the needle, um, the cloth, the hoop, so this one, um, and then the actual pattern to follow, or a really, like, easier, easier way is actually, there's some fabric that 
the design is printed onto the fabric and so you just have to like follow uh, by like the color of the thread um, but basically how it works like the easiest way I can I guess explain it this one if I were to I guess grade it on level um, I would say it's probably like a medium hard because uh, there's like a lot of color switching um, personally I think anything that has more than like four colors is complicated uh, because especially there's a lot of like in-between tones and stuff so you really have to pay attention to the count because if not that's kind of even what happened to me I had to like switch over um, because I outlined it in black and stuff uh, but I didn't like it too much because I had to switch around the color choices but cross stitching in and of itself it's just um, it's repetitive but um, by the end of it, I think, uh, like, you get something very beautiful, like, uh, out of it, and I think it's kind of one of those things where you can zone out, especially with certain patterns, like, you kind of get into a rhythm of it, that, like, the counts and stuff, like, once you do one side, you kind of know, uh, what to expect on the other, because a lot of patterns, they kind of, like, split in half. So you kind of follow what it is with this, and then on the other half, uh, like, you know what it is. But um, just a lot of it, it's basically from, like, going from the middle and then finding that um, on your hoop. And you actually get to the interesting part is that you don't have to, like, keep the hoop exactly where it is at all times. You can adjust it. You just, like, pop it out and then, like, move around the fabric uh, as you desire. Now, I done goofed up, and uh, it even says it here where, like, the size is 9 by 9.21 inches, but um, my craft store is limited, so, like, the hoop is uh, 8 inches. Um, so I can only do part of the design, but um, still, I'm, like, super excited just to see. And what I love is, like, this PDF that I downloaded, um, it came with two patterns, so I'm, like, super excited. Well, I don't know why it reminds me of doing pixel art, but it does. It does, yeah, because I was actually talking to some people about this, too, where um, a lot of, like, what the actual, um, like, like, it's individual boxes and stuff, but you can actually use MS Paint and stuff to make uh, the design, and it's just on a grid, so once like you follow the grid and stuff yeah like people make their own designs it's not even companies anymore because i talked about it a little bit on my previous stream that a lot of craft stores when they would come out with the kits it was always the same like kittens and cactuses and roses and stuff but i kind of wanted to do something more i don't know i guess like my style like my witchy i don't know <laughs> Uh, holiday like uh, Halloween uh, vibes I guess um, that's literally like my aesthetic all year round um, and I kind of wanted to do something where people they do they kind of sew this but you can cut out the fabric on the side and it's it's like a frame so you can just like hang it on your wall um, but uh, if you are starting out and if it's something that's uh, like you're interested in I definitely recommend um, like uh, whatchamacallit, uh, kits that are ready, like, where it has, like, the thread that you would need and stuff, because, like, that's basically the information. I just got the, like, kind of printout instruction manual, but I had to get the thread and the hoop and the Ida fabric already. Um, like, I had to, like, buy that separately, like, in a roll, so, uh, I had to, like, even change up some of the design like the colors and stuff because they weren't available so it gets a little complicated that way but if you get a kit it's like kind of all there it's a bit more expensive because it's actual materials that you're buying i want to double check if maybe she has it because honestly her patterns are so cool um but i guess how you can i would even look up like beginner like beginner friendly yeah because this was one of the designs i want to do because i want to do a whole like where it's like bugs and stuff like that's like i want to do moth beetle and then possibly like a honeybee i was thinking for like my third one um or like another type of beetle design but like that's kind of what i wanted to do 
for my wall but that is complicated like it, it is like you really got to especially once you you know it's complicated when there's kind of like a little bit of like half shades in something um but for the most part i think it's more about size uh like so you can kind of go by um like for me it's just switching colors that's like the most time consuming because you have to like just plan ahead um let me double check uh in case yeah but they do have beginner uh sewing or cross stitching i guess but yeah for me i find um cross stitching is easier then, yeah, so you can actually find, like, whole sets, so, it, like, it comes with the ring and everything, and it's, like, teeny tiny, um, but, yeah, I find it, uh, like, easier than embroidery, because at least with embroidery, I always mess up with, like, the lines, like, I always do, like, they come out crooked, so the difference between embroidery and uh, cross stitching it's like cross stitching it's it's exactly kind of what you talked about Jess like where it's uh x's and stuff oh these are so cute they're like mini oh look how adorable that is but yeah I wouldn't doubt that people use um oh yeah and definitely be careful yeah see look it is like a cross stitch um because it's basically designed in, in blocks oh I love this little beetle juice <laughs> how adorable i'm gonna save that that's really really cute but yeah uh be careful because um like a lot of the times especially on etsy they sell the kits and then other times they sell the um like the just the pdf by itself so uh just be careful like what it is that you're buying so then you make sure because i've seen people even complain about like oh well like, I was expecting something in the mail, but I just got a file. And a lot of the times, even when you download it, it's kind of non-refundable. Unless you, like, immediately contact the seller and don't open the file. Like, as long as you don't download it, um, like, you can contact the seller and stuff. And then they manually, um, like, kind of, like, cancel the download and stuff. So, but once you open it, it's kind of like your fate is sealed sort of thing. But uh, that's the only, like, uh, cross-stitch stuff um, because I had somebody reach out to me and said that they were interested in um, starting it out, but, like, it was hard to know, like, where. Um, so, yeah, if, honestly, I say even, even if it looks difficult, just pick something that is fun to you even if you think it's like really complicated and stuff that's kind of like what happened to me I haven't cross stitched in a long time but this is like fun enough and the design is pretty enough that I like kind of push forward and say oh okay I want to keep it's kind of very similar how I view art too where it's like okay this is difficult but I want to keep going um so yeah like uh it all just depends um and the cool thing is you can even edit or find other patterns to like merge with stuff. I was actually like looking into that too. Um, there's PDFs and stuff where they're kind of um, just loose images. So uh, like just a flower or um, text or stuff like that. And you can actually use that in your work or incorporate it. So that's what I was kind of wondering, uh, especially with um, like this crescent moon too, you kind of already have the pattern there. So even if you want to move stuff around and edit it, or you even want to put this on like another piece of work, you kind of have already the blueprint on how to do that in the stitch count. So it's just basically uh, sewing it on to like where you want it placed. Um, and yeah, that's basically how it works. It's just kind of working from the middle and then building. Um, oh, and then marking off too um like what you've already done it's kind of like counting your stitches like in knitting but for me I have like an easier time because I have like something that I can reference I guess um with with like knitting for whatever reason I get lost pretty easily um with counts and stuff um but yeah that is at least um uh the stitching questions that I got so far um, if anything, uh, like if you guys want me to elaborate on other things or you want me to like look at specific patterns or anything and we can do it on stream, like I'm more than happy to as well. 
Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, sewing-wise, that's, that's already answered. So I think it's time now to talk about um, the Hollis family. <laughs> Um, so if you guys were here last stream, we were talking about how, uh, basically, uh, in case this is like your first time that we talk about, uh, the Hollises, they were basically a couple that they, um, sold marriage advice, I guess, and the scandal was that they got a divorce, like, a month before they were gonna do this big retreat, and they did, they, they were, like, self-help gurus, like, that sold their marriage and relationship <laughs> as, um, this like perfect thing and what people got really mad at was that they announced their divorce like a month before the rise together that was like the name of their conference and so basically people were like hey these people are scam artists like they sold you know all of these you know <laughs> um like advice columns and uh retreats and all that stuff just to end up being divorced <laughs> so um they were kind of going through all of that i want to say like at the end of 2020 especially when the pandemic hit oh excuse me sorry i'm getting like caffeinated <laughs> um well what's funny is is that uh why i started talking about it again was uh like we would kind of roast <laughs> their um advice uh oh lord these dudes yes no, and what's great is, Jess, like, it's gotten worse because Dave, you know, like, how they're divorced, right? Dave got a new girlfriend, okay? Now, Dave got a new girlfriend, and what we talked about last stream was that he came out with a book. And it was not just any book. It was a very nautical-themed book. And, oh, hello, hi, welcome. Um, and it's okay. You need caffeine. Thank you. Yes. So he got a new girl, <laughs> number one, which we'll, we'll kind of hear a little bit from her because people wanted me to elaborate. So they wanted me to elaborate on two, two major things. Um, one is that he came out with a book and I was kind of ripping it a little bit. And like one user was like, oh, why are you being so like nitpicky and stuff? And which is fair. Like, I, I I was nitpicky about it because <laughs> I've seen this concept but done better and this is why this is this is for the person who who answered me this um like basically here we have a man who's come out with a book right and it's all about like boat metaphors about his life how basically uh he went through this divorce that he didn't want and it like, he never acknowledges that any of it was a scam, right? So he talks about how, like, his wife put him through this thing, and he's using all these boat metaphors, right? Like, basically saying, like, oh, life is just full of rough waters, and, you know, I'm just the captain of my own ship, and you can't, you know, um, sail the seas with, like, anybody's map but your own, and, like, all of these very Pinterest board stuff. And for me, as a reader, I'm kind of like, okay, this is very shallow. Mind you, the first chapter is him showing his sorority girl tattoo of, like, uh, a quote, I believe. I, I want to say maybe it's possibly a Hemingway quote. I could be wrong. But, yeah, so, and the thing is, is that, and to the person who said, well, you're being nitpicky, it's true, I am, I'm very much being nitpicky, but I've seen this concept, but done correctly, so, like, the example I want to give of somebody who gives, who maybe, like, their style and their humor, um, is maybe not your jam, and it is a book that's critiqued, but I thought the idea was at least well executed, it's good, clean, fun, um, by, uh, I always call him Rob Swanson, it's not, it's the, the actor's name is uh, Nick Offerman, but he's an actual carpenter, like, or at least he is passionate about carpentry, and a lot of his book is basically about how he got into the profession, how he's, like, learning, and, like, actively participating in the things that he's talking about, and sure, his advice could be very uh, novice, like, that's basically what people uh, talk about, where a lot of his uh, take on the hobby, it's kind of a very um, Hollywood-esque, like, where it, you can tell 
that it's somebody who's very new to the hobby and he really uh, likes it and is very passionate about it, but it's kind of superficial, but at least he's doing the thing, right? And then we have Dave, who he um, is just talking about boats, like in the sense of like, oh yes, life is, is just an open sea of difficulties and blah, blah, blah. But like, it's not really practical advice and it's something, it's, it's fortune cookie advice, right? So a lot of what he's talking about, and you'll see because he actually has, yeah, do you even sail, bro? Which he doesn't because, um, there was this whole thing where he even uh, did a marathon. So with mar uh, or is it triathlon? I, I get those two confused. I apologize. Probably triathlon where it's like the swimming, the bike, and then the running. But he didn't, <laughs> he had this whole six month preparation and he just swam in a pool. And his first time in open water was basically in the triathlon, which is pretty dangerous because there was no, that's the triathlon. Thank you. Um, yeah, the try. Ugh. Thank you. Um, so basically this guy, you know, is talking about uh, launching his book and then facing his fear uh, for open water. Yeah. And then he tapped out of the race. Like he completely tapped out of the race because he was ill prepared. And instead of telling his followers like, hey, this was a stunt for my book. And I was I had a trainer, but, you know, I. I effed up, I effed up, I should have trained, and I should have faced my fears in a responsible way, no, he kept going, he just kept going, and selling this thing of being like, no, I had to do it, I, I was brave, I was, I had to face my fears, and you know what, I failed, but I failed my own way, and it's kind of like, really, <laughs> is this what we're doing, but, um, so yeah, so that's like that answer at least. So I don't want to knock down somebody writing a book if this is like therapeutic for you and stuff, but let's be honest with when you use, um, like all of these like fluffy metaphors of life, but you don't like, I feel at least, uh, kind of like from this other book where you talk about, yeah, where if someone's like, um, for, uh, this book specifically, right? Nick Offerman's book. If you tell me, like, if he's writing a memoir of his life and he's like, well, life is sometimes like a tree that you want to chop down and, and make into some, like, a desk, like, and, you know, like, where, like, life is, is like this, this thing that seems so impossible, but you have this idea of what you want. It's, it voices very different from somebody who has this idea of what carpentry and challenges and stuff are than somebody who's actually in where you can, you can totally critique that it's kind of like novice or it's like very naive, but at least he's doing the damn thing, you know? And, um, so that was at least, uh, one of like the Hollis questions of like why I, I don't like the way, um, he goes about his book and I feel it's kind of, um, superficial and why I get nit nitpicky because I've seen it before and I've seen it done better, I guess. Um, and, uh, and then the second one is that somebody, uh, caught on my stream where I talked about his ex-wife's rant. And they were like, oh, I want to hear her rant because we talked about his rant, but not hers. So this was literally, I want to say, a couple months before, um, like, uh, Dave's rant was a week ago, right? But his ex-wife, this was, I want to say, a month before the famous Rise Together conference, the one that they should have been together, but they didn't. So uh, Rachel was basically going solo. Um, and <laughs> she had this to say, basically, um, and this was for, I think, like, Women's Day or something like that, so she made an Instagram post, and this was what she, look at those eyes, guys, Oof. like, I feel like she's, like, looking into my soul, like, woo, um, but yeah, so they wanted more information, I had a follower being like, hey, please talk about the crazy eyes, those are Karen eyes, and you're gonna see why they're Karen eyes, um, so this is what, uh, and I'll refresh, uh, Dave's rant. And I'm telling you these two, as much as they did get divorced, like they're kind of cut from the same cloth because a lot of what you kind of hear a lot of each other in this. And they were, they were in business together as much as they were a couple, a lot of, um, 
and I guess that's why I find them very fascinating. If uh, you were here like uh, a couple of streams ago, yeah, and I haven't even played it, so you'll see. Um, so I'll play hers, I'll play Dave's, and then um, we're also going to get after that. We're gonna go into the girlfriend too. So uh, so th this is uh, Dave's new lady, um, but we'll go for. <laughs> She is staring. Um, I'll play her fast so then we can get over it. <laughs> Yesterday, I was doing a live stream, and I mentioned that there's a sweet woman who comes to my house twice a week and cleans. She's my, my house cleaner. She cleans the toilets. Someone commented and said, you are privileged AF. And I was like, you're right. I'm super freaking privileged, but also I work my ass off to have the money to have someone come twice a week and clean my toilets. And I told her that, and then she said, well, you're unrelatable. <gasps> what is it about me that made you think I want to be relatable? No, sis, literally everything I do in my life is to live a life that most people can't relate to. Most people won't work this hard. Most people won't get up at 4 a.m. Most people won't fail publicly again and again just to reach the top of the mountain. Literally every woman I admire in history was unrelatable. If my life is relatable to most people, I'm doing it wrong. Okay, now imagine that for 30 minutes. <laughs> so you you understand, you know, what we're dealing with. Now, this was Dave's uh, worser half, I guess you can say. Um, so yeah, that goes up and then all like i want to say a month before her conference and of course people are up in arms obviously we can see why um and this was just from one comment and she kind of <laughs> i'll play her fast so we can get over <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah so basically that's that's what that is okay now we listen to rachel now dave uh in case you guys weren't here um this is his rant a week ago. So now now you guys can see how similar they are. Because this is our contract. This is it. I will show up every single day for y'all. We're starting a book club on Wednesday. Wednesday, the third day of no November. Third of November, right? We're going to start a book club. And I am going to get up every single day and i am going to hand you a 50 plus page pdf workbook for free and i'm going to give you the journaling prompts and i'm going to give you the work prompts that are going to take you through every single one of these chapters and some of you are just going to join the lives that's cheating that is cheating i've written a book for you it is 18 american dollars it is 18 American dollars. And I'm just telling you right now, 100%, it'll change your life. So I'm cutting it off, but <laughs> so imagine that, because uh, we played a last stream, so I don't want to torture you guys more. Now he rants about the $18 and how you shouldn't follow him if uh, like you haven't bought the book, you're cheating. And mind you, this guy is just talking about how it's his life purpose to help people, but you need to buy his book to have it. <laughs> so you kind of see the, the similarities between these two, kind of how books, people, videos, yes. Oh, sorry, um, Chumpy says, I have no clue who these people are, but wow. You know, I've seen this sort of stuff before where it's so much hype, but without, exactly, like it's, fascinating and this is why i like to kind of put all of these things together because um and i cut it off mind you this is 11 minutes but this is like 11 minutes of a two hour um <laughs> like live stream he like if you guys want the link to the whole thing uh to summarize it so then you guys don't have to um, he talks about how people need to buy his book, that it's $18 um, and it'll change your life and you need to spend the $18 to please unfollow him if uh, like you're not going to buy the book, that he would rather have uh, like two subscribers than a whole bunch of people who are just cheating and uh, looking at his stuff um, and working through kind of his book uh, without paying that fee 
and how it was 18 months of his life and he was going to his last plea to have you buy the book was that he is wearing uh, American flag socks and he was going to mail you his <laughs> American flag socks uh, to you know as a prize I guess I don't know <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this was at least if it's your first, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that's a no for me. Um, but this was, uh, them before and a lot of people, cause I commented how they would talk about spicy time, like as a couple and say that, oh yeah, if you're not having enough spicy time, like you just need to have it every single day. Um, and a lot of people were just like, what? That's crazy. Like, they wouldn't give that advice. Oh, yes, they would. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is brain pain o'clock. I completely agree. And th yes, yes, it's it's like that. And the thing is, is that I'm pretty sure, um, because we've been kind of listening to his lives and stuff. Um, that's basically all of the advice that I've heard so far from his workbook class I've been playing it in the background as I've been sewing and a lot of it is just that it's kind of like huh want to start a business and need money just get more money what are you doing believe in yourself believe in yourself to get more money <laughs> um which isn't practical <laughs> advice at all but uh, I did want to play this clip because so then you can kind of see how they are as a couple that they they were exact. This wasn't too long ago either. What this was March 2020. And then uh, also somebody wanted to see the, the new girlfriend. Um, and I'm kind of curious, too, because I wonder if she's just like Rachel. Like there's part of me that because Dave sounds so crazy and he sounds exactly how he kind of did in there in their podcasts I'm kind of curious so that's what we're just gonna play because I want to give what the people want and they were curious about that part and then if we have time then we'll you know like uh go back to the the workbooks I guess but let me know if you guys want to listen to something else or it's not your jam it's just this is fascinating this is honestly this all happened within a span of eight months and it's been just this roller coaster on my youtube feed and i know these people aren't extremely famous or anything so like i know i'm literally in this small corner of the internet that it's very rare <laughs> to just see all of these things happening all at once so i just honestly i just need <laughs> Whoa, just have to believe to get more money. Conceal, don't feel, and don't let them know. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know while you're at it before you let it go. That's so funny. I feel like they'd say something like that too. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. So this is proof, I guess. This is like my video evidence that they were a couple before. Um, and this is the way that they spoke. So, you know, it's not a huge leap from what they what they're like you know oh so an interesting thing is that you we cannot talk about our relationship today without talking about the business because the business is like this third part of our relationship there's me there's dave there's the hollis company and it is such a massive part of our life and because so much of our life now is wrapped up in taking care of the business, growing the business, scaling the business, leading this team. Yeah, and we talked about that last stream where it's like a lot of what they do, it's kind of very business focused and it was it was weird the way that they talked about relationships um is kind of like not realistic in any way. It's it's almost like if aliens came down and said, "Yes, this is what humans are like." Like Humans are totally like this. I could see them being good business. <laughs> oh, yeah, huge red flag. Um, and this is like the mindset that they had as a couple. So it is very like, um, I guess, like influencer type where it looks good on paper and stuff. But I really, when we were listening to it, um, nobody was really all that surprised um, except for their followers because, you know, I guess when you're 
drinking the Kool-Aid in that way. Um, it's, it's surprising because they were so up in arms about, yes, make, push through the hard times, you know, be tough, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, I just think it was all about the money, you know? Um, I was just thinking these two seem like business partners that married because it was a good business decision, not a couple. I can see that too. Oh yeah, completely. Um, and I want to get, I want to see if I can find, I just want to find like the part where they talk about spicy time because I, like that really like left people um, like, oh really? Like that's, that can't be true. Oh yes. <laughs> so now you know kind of, let me see if I can find it really quick uh, because I think that's like the perfect example of how delusional like they both were but I thought it was kind of oh so they're Rachel and Dave Hollis oh no that's fine um so they're kind of part of why I know about them it's because I follow a lot of booktubers that they kind of review um all kinds of books so they kind of go into different categories of let's say fiction science fiction uh self-help blah 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 and I the specific youtuber that I follow her name is Savvy I think it's Savvy Writes Books. Wait, let me let me double check so I can at least give my sources correctly. But she went on this whole... Let me see. Uh, da, da, da. But she went on... Oh, yes, Savvy Writes Books, yes. So she I did a whole... You. Basically, uh, anytime they launch out a book or a new business venture, she's kind of too, like, an anti mlm -er um savvy so both rachel and dave got into the mlm scene like so kind of um where their self-help book was sold in like uh these conferences these mlm conferences and stuff so uh that's where i found them out and basically the scandals that both her and her husband got into several times just piqued my interest so much i started just following yeah, I just started following their <laughs> their um their because there was so much of it and what really fascinated me especially that I'm married and it's not to say like I'm any sort of expert at all because I'm not but that they gave such horrible relationship advice like where I could not imagine telling anybody the advice that they they gave people at all. So that's how I guess even on my channel how I started reacting to their advice and how we got here now <laughs> yeah it was a train wreck because a lot of what they said it just didn't make sense at all like whatsoever like it makes sense why they got divorced because it, it was just terrible <laughs> terrible probably Jess can attest to like all of the crazy things that they would say and it, it was just who. So, uh, let me see. I really want to see if I can find really quick. So then you can see what I'm talking about. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Like, I'm I'm sorry I'm blabbing more than I'm, like, cross-stitching right now. But, yeah, I at least like to, like, spice up the stream somehow with just crazy things that I, <laughs> that I hear. Um, because it's... I don't know. It's one of those things where I know I really can't talk to anybody about this <laughs> except on the internet uh, because it's so nonsensical. Like where I know these two people, they have their own businesses, they have their own fan base and stuff, but it's just, I don't know. It's insane to hear. <laughs> um, but I'm glad to see that. Thank you. Um, and I'm I'm glad because at least... I at least like to talk about this stuff in the sense of like, listen, if you hear this and it doesn't work for you, the problem is not you, <laughs> okay? Like I'm, I am, I'm very spiritual. I'm very into people um, like reflecting and all that stuff. But at the same time, like don't, <laughs> like don't feel bad when you hear these sort of things and go, huh? Like, oh yay, high five, yeah. Um, oh, let me see if I can sp find spicy time. Like, that's my agenda right now, just to see if... 
Oh, yeah, they say some interesting stuff. I don't remember too much of it. I found the Hollis stuff through a drama channel. Exactly. I've been giggling this entire time, but also trying not to cause pain. Oh, no, please. If, like, don't, please don't. If anything, um, you can always, like, listen back to it. I upload the streams, mama. Like, don't, don't feel, um, like, don't feel, uh, like, obligated too because by the end of it your your comfort is what is important um oh okay wait let me see if i can find spicy time because that that for me i think that it'll put the nail in the coffin so then you understand how crazy this couple was Oh, wait, I think, like, where she laughs, I think, like, where he first says the word spicy time. Um, let me see. I remember that. Uh, okay, maybe. Oh, I already buy that they are conductors on the crazy day. <laughs> wait, let me see if I can find it. If if it's not this clip, we'll just move on to the new girlfriend, because that's that was, like, a question that I got from two different users. So, and I'm genuinely curious, too, because I haven't... Heard from her other than, which, funny enough, she was hyping his book. Like, so his new girlfriend, I think her name is Heidi Powell. And what's funny is she went on a different podcast a day later and said that she didn't even read the book, which is so funny. So she got so busted because she keeps posting, like, being like, yeah, this is, like, the greatest book ever. And it's going to change your life, guys. Like, Dave worked so hard on it. And then literally in a podcast, it's, like, right after she was like oh yeah no i totally didn't read the book like um i'm just here for my man and it was like oh no so people have been like basically retweeting <laughs> god train wreck let me see if this is spicy time i picked a bad year to stop drinking <laughs> picked a bad year to stop sniffing glue i mean like what that's a line from a movie oh okay i'm like <laughs> david i picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue you're making a joke. These people are going to think you actually do that. No, I don't. I, I picked a bad year. I mean, it's, it's not, I, I, it's not a bad year. also a joke. It's, it's a good it's, year. It's, it's a good year. It's a good year to not It's a fantastic year alcohol. to transition from negative coping mechanisms to positive coping mechanisms. But the decision to fully experience the friction, the breaking down of the muscle, the, the pain of being outside of a comfort zone means that you're sitting in pain. And that's funny because that's, oh, okay, besides the sniffing glue part, honestly, I could, be <laughs> I could believe that, especially the rant that he went to. You're making a joke. These people are going to think you do that translation. That might hurt our British. <laughs> that's so true. Like, honestly, I wouldn't doubt it because how he acted throughout this whole thing, please tell me that this guy throughout the whole thing doesn't sound possibly allegedly please don't don't shut me down for for contemplating this but he i i could believe that. <laughs> like i could believe that They've written something in this book the words that are used they are written with love and they were written specifically for you i am positive like beyond a shadow of a doubt more like certain of anything that i have ever been certain of that there is something that is inside of the book that is sitting currently on my lap that would change your life. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, Dave, mm, I, I wouldn't put it behind you. If, if, if that's your coping mechanism, like, mm. uh, let me see. Okay, I can't find spicy time, but I'll do that another time. So we're going to get into, because this was a series of things. I've known people like this, and they are so manipulative for their own gain. It honestly burns me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's very much like this gilded idea of, and like to sell it to people who are going through legitimate problems. That's what really, like, I guess rustles my feathers in that way, um, where, th like, when you think about it, like the problems that they go through as a couple, who wouldn't want some insider information as far as like, wow, what's it like to 
you know, build your own business and support your partner and, you know, take that risk. And this is like, exactly. I think it's, it's a very charlatan move and to not be humble enough to be like, Hey, you know what? I don't have all the answers and that's okay. Let's figure this out. Which he does say, he does say like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm a student. I'm a student in this world of, you know, this and that. But what is he really teaching? Like by the end of it, how is it that you can be humble and say, hey, I'm just a student in this world and figuring it all out, but pay me $18. And <laughs> yeah, basically it, it is. It's very snake oil salesman sort of thing. So, uh, okay, I'm going to answer the last question I was given before uh, we get into uh, more stuff. And that was the girlfriend. Um, so this is uh, Dave's uh, new, new woman, uh, the new love of his life, um, and there's also speculation, I'm not sure, but there was speculation of, um, when they started dating, um, like, where the time frame and stuff is questionable, as far as when, uh, like, Rachel and Dave got divorced, and then, you know, Heidi coming onto the scene kind of quickly, um, so people have like question marks about it. So it'll be interesting um, to see kind of that. So since that was like a question that you guys gave me, I thought I would answer that with a video that I haven't seen. Um, I just uh, looked it up real quick. Oh my, okay. Yeah, so this was in September, 2021. So like uh, technically a year-ish after uh, they announced their divorce, um, so I guess she's gonna answer that <laughs> that question uh, for us today. So I, I I'm not sure. I really have no idea what's gonna happen. So I'm I'm in it like with you guys. I'm gonna be sipping my coffee and and doing all this stuff. And maybe something interesting will be said. Maybe not. But um, I guess we'll see. Also, man, those gains though, girl. Ooh, man, I do. Like I look at her. I'm like, dang, I need to go to the gym. <laughs> Uh, I did, I, I'm like on my rest period right now, like, uh, for today, but I'm just like, ooh, yeah, okay, so the drama, let's go. Pizza or salad? Okay, is this ad trying to tell me something? Like, why? I feel offended. I know I just said I'm not, like, today's my, like, rest day, but why you gotta, like, shove a pizza in my face? God. Okay. Ooh, sometimes I get creeped out when YouTube listens to me a little bit. <laughs> I feel attacked, I know. I'm just like, dang, I just had, like, my breakfast. Like, why you gotta be like that? Something new today, right now. Uh, I guess there's a lot of people... All right, we're gonna do something new today, right now. Uh, I guess there's a lot of people asking questions. And I don't know what they are. So I am going to answer the question that Nick says. I get a lot. Nick, I feel like I need a camera on Nick right now so you can see Nick. But there is a Nick back there. And if you've been watching my YouTube channel, you know there's a Nick back there. Nick's going to ask me the question. I have no clue what it is. And then I'm just going to take a minute to uh, answer that question for you. You know what? I'm kind of relieved that she doesn't even know what's going on. So I feel like a little bit like better as far as like what we're about to see because I'm like, oh, okay, so we're all on the same page. I don't know what's going on. You guys at home don't know what going what's going on and neither does Heidi. So let's go. <laughs> oh, Jess, you're like, how dare you? <laughs> and also like, can we, she says exactly. I was going to say, I was like, if you're going to put a camera and I'm going to put makeup on, you know, like we're making a whole production of this. You're telling me that she, mm, yeah, I, I have a uh, suspicion. I wish I had like the little sus thing, like the little, um, like sus picture, but yes, it's a script in surprise <laughs> because that's what life is, man. That's what life is. Life is just like full of surprises. So let's, let's see, let's, let's give Heidi the benefit of the doubt. How did Heidi Powell meet Dave Holland? And when? Question. And when? That is actually the question that has not yet been answered anywhere in the world. And I'm going to tell you today. I am. Dave. Sorry, Dave. You're not going to watch this. You had too much stuff to do. We're rolling. Oh, we are. Oh, my. Anyway, please, we shall roll. Figure, 
I, I learned who he was through social media when Chris and I were already going through our divorce. So this was probably, it was October, 2019. Chris's and my divorce started in August, 2019. Um, okay, can, can we be honest? Like who in God's green earth knows the date? Like, like the exact date that you meet somebody? Like, don't get me wrong. Like I even, I have like our date anniversary, like when my husband and I met and stuff like that. But that, that was like, calculated like a year after like where it's kind of like huh like when but other than like our <laughs> our like actual like wedding I don't know anything like if it wasn't for Facebook uh, and I only knew the date because like we took like a specific picture um before uh like he left back so uh, like quick thing like we were long distance for a bit so and we took a picture like I guess together when we became official I guess like my personal like date anniversary I guess but if it wasn't for Facebook I would not know that's basically what I mean where I would not know specifically the month and the year um this seems like a little hmm, like really so you already have already prepared like without really thinking about it or like looking through like huh when like when did we like become official and then like looking through text messages or um I don't know. That's that's a little I mm, You know that stuff when you, you are having the fake thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I would not know off the bat like even oh god. Like I know when our anniversary is cuz we have like a piece of paper and we've already celebrated it twice, so I, I feel pretty confident. And I also kind of cheat knowing because it's 10 days after like my husband's birthday. So it's just like, oh, okay, like it's easier to clump, but sorry, I have like a visceral reaction to phony people. Oh, no, not at all. I love the feedback because I feel these same emotions and sometimes I feel <laughs> like I'm crazy. So when you guys like talk to me about this thing, I'm like, oh, okay, yes. Like, thank God I'm not the only one. So hopefully we can all bond with this same reaction. Don't worry. You, we're, we're here for each other. <laughs> This is like a support group, a phony people, a charlatan support group. <laughs> Only because, and the world did not know, Dave did not know, nobody knew that um, I, Chris and I were going through a divorce. Um, he had actually reached out and said, hey, I, he had commented on some of my stuff, very nice guy, commented on Chris's stuff. And then he had reached out and said, hey, I'm coming out with a book in March. If there's any way you could read a copy, the galley copy, and make an endorsement for me that would be super amazing are you telling me that i'm sorry i literally stopped sewing so the reason why they started dating was because of this damn book are you serious right now i i am shocked how even in his dating life like it's about his damn book still this is this is crazy oh is this the ex no this is the new girlfriend so this is Heidi Powell. I know they look very similar. Like this is like, this is how crazy it is. It kind of feels like the Stepford Wives. If you guys know that movie where, yeah, she's like the the new boo. Um, yeah. So this is the, uh, the, oh no, I, I X'd it out. Um, so the, the one that we taught that was uh, ranting about uh, the lady who, the cleaning lady and yeah. Um, let me see if we can. Yeah, the one with the crazy eyes, um, the deleted yeah, TikTok right. one. Crazy eyes. Crazy eyes was the was the ex wife. Uh huh. And then uh, that's Rachel. Dave is this guy. And then uh, who's like the book that we kind of talked about, the boat book. Like that's how he kind of met Nubu. So Nubu is Heidi Powell. So new wife met him uh, because he wanted her to plug exactly yes oh my gosh it all goes back to the book it's oh if you guys are wondering what the new book is because he has a couple of books out um, this is this is the boat book so basically to sum it up uh, <laughs> the story is according to Nubu was that uh, Dave contacted her uh like a month after her divorce and was like hey can you plug in my new book and i guess that's how they met so 
Instant <laughs> looks at the red flag in his hands. Yeah. So I guess we're back to square one, people. Um. So so yeah. Alrighty. So I guess that's the the intro to this lore, to the Hollis lore of like uh how how they met. Um, and I said, sure, of course, he sent me a video message over Instagram, and it was a nice thing. He sent me the book. Like, this is just what happens in our world. We he sent you a video message. Yeah. So this is the thing. This is the thing, though, that influencers do to each other. So then we know that it's not an assistant on the other side of the DM, because sometimes a message that's sent is an assistant. Oh, I'm gonna hop off. Good night. Good night, Jess. Have fun learning about the hot stuff. I love that you're calling I need my new boo. Oh, bye, Jess. Have a sweet, sweet rest. Uh, good night. Oh, and uh, please feel better. I'm sending you lots of like Healy, Healy vibes uh, your way. And don't worry, uh, anything uh, that you ever need a recap on and stuff, um, I got you. <laughs> Assistant. So that this is how I I become friends with a handful of them where I usually won't respond because I'm like, oh, it's just an assistant. But when it's a video message, it's like, oh, it's him. And I didn't even know Dave. I thought it was super nice. Uh, he sent me the book. I was too nice to say no. <laughs> so I wrote him his endorsement for his book. Um, Did you read his book? One chapter. <laughs> I read one chapter. To this day, I've read one chapter of Dave's book. Oh my gosh. You, did you hear that? Did, did you hear that? We're, we're just gonna, she said it from, I was, I, like, I was going to, like, try and find where, like, in the interview, but I guess she said it, so she endorsed his book, uh, oh, boy, yeah, you saw that, you saw that, how can I answer this without lying, one chapter, to this day, I've read one chapter of Dave's book, and what's funny is when I read through some of the uh, interactions that we had, I was like, your book is amazing. Bold face lie. I mean, the first chapter was really great. It was really great. <laughs> um, so ended up sending that. His book came out in March at, or was coming out uh, February, March. This is Bro, and this is so rich because Good like, answer. ooh, Dave, excuse me, sir, it is not your turn. Um, but it's so rich because literally in all of his Instagram stuff, like she just talks about how, like, oh, like, this is the best thing ever. I I am going to like support you. You are so brave for, for doing this. Like literally, she's always like the second comment or. Yeah, see, look, Heidi Powell right here. I love you. I know your heart, and it's a beautiful one. We all do and say things we wish we wouldn't have. Oh, yeah, this is, like, his apology for his rant and stuff. Um, basically being, like, yes, this, this like, book and stuff, it's just, it's life-changing. You're doing, like, the Lord's work. It's, you know, and then you kind of hear this and be like, Heidi, you didn't even read the thing. Like, well, I get supporting your man. I really do. Like, I am there for my hubby, but let's be real. If there's certain things that he's passionate about and I just don't know anything about it, I I just shut up. <laughs> like, I can't. I cannot. Uh, okay, so you just admitted to lying to the people that you're influencing. Exactly. Like, and she is. She's always, like, the second or third one. Uh, you can't support by talking about how much work he's put into it, not the content if you have. Re exactly. Like, I think there's limitations to... And by the end of it, letting, like, the other person shine in that way. Um, but if it's something where, can you believe that this guy is saying, like, yes, um, like, this book is going to change your life. And, and telling people adamant about, like, how your content is, is life-changing. And then the person who you love and stuff like that, uh, who's, you know, up to bat for you, is literally like, uh, oh, sure, like, I've only read one chapter. That's kind of, oof, like, eesh. I, 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 it's just, mm, I, I don't know about that. It's like, like, the least you can at least, I'm not saying that she has to read it or anything like that, but it's kind of a testament of how superficial, and I think that's just what it is. It's that, like, how can you endorse something that you've never really read or... And, and you can even admit that it's not something that's for you. Um, 
like you can say like well you know i am in a good place of my life but i see what he's gone through especially with his divorce and there's like two divorced people and stuff but like there just comes a point where uh you have to be honest and i think this is just her being um like kind of like the pretty face to like what he's doing but it's kind of uh you're i think a lot of the times like belittling your audience you know when you do things like this it's just eek, just big big yikes right about right before covid had started but february we reconnected again because he had posted my testimonial on insta and he tagged me and I said, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Congratulations, this is a big deal because Chris and I had had a couple books come out and it's a really big deal. And our in in conversation was one text back and forth. Great, blah, 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 happy to know you. And then he was Oh, it says you all are such idiots that I can just spout off whatever and you will buy. Yeah, and it's and I think that's where like the complaints kind of come from where when they write about things, it comes from a very um, like delusional point to like where people um like you can say one way or another uh that they have very specific circumstances where dave he was a uh like ceo of disney and but who wouldn't like want kind of intel about that or you know conversations about how you know what his days looked like what um i know savvy the youtuber i commented about where i found um the content that was like one of the critiques that she said where it was like hey you know like he has life experience you know he's a dad he's you know um he's worked with with companies and stuff like that but why is it that he's spewing out such v vague uh fortune cookie advice when in and of itself it's not practical to anybody but people in his very specific uh like spot in life where not everyone is going to find use and a lot of the, like the things that he's talk talked about it's kind of yeah it's not it's not for everybody but he's acting like it is he's acting like it's this like answer to the universe when it's it's kind of not you know he replied and said hey we would love to have you and chris on rise together hot podcast or rise together podcast he said, I don't know if you know my wife, Rachel, and I, which I actually didn't know much of Rachel at all, but he said we have a hit podcast. Oh, that's a little bit of a burn. Like, oh, I don't, I know who Dave is, but I didn't know who his ex-wife was. Okay. Like, mind you, Rise Together podcast was like their pro podcast together. So it's like, mmm, salty. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, I think I need to like wash down this salt with something because, oof. I mean, huge numbers. If you and Chris would want to come on, we would love to have you in person if you could come out to Texas. And because this was before virtual. And I was like, yeah, 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 let me talk to him. And I never got back to him after that because I was like, Chris, there's no way you and I can go on a podcast with another dynamic duo. Like in my and Chris's eyes and the things, the feedback we get is that Chris and I were relationship goals. And like, th and they were in their own right, relationship goals to the world's eyes. They are two divorced people. Like Heidi and Chris Powell are divorced. And I don't know if like when he reached out, like they were divorced also, but it was like, okay. <laughs> it's, I hope she's going into an ironic turn on this one. Um, and so my fear was if I go on, there's no way I could tippy toe around the questions that they would ask without actually lying so i never got back with him at all because i thought gosh if we go on we would have to either one tell them that we're divorcing which i was not ready at that point in time to tell the world that i was going through a divorce um or two we'd have to lie because they would say hey how do you work together and make it work like how do you work so well together and the truth is we were working terribly together at the time um so that was kind of the end i can't believe where um can you imagine two people who are working together and like still willingly like like where they're getting a divorce but they're they're putting on this facade of working together this is insane to me to tell you the truth i thought rachel and dave were kind of just in the space but i guess 
uh, Heidi and her husband, like, were also, oh, uh, Chumpy says, I think I've come to the point where I don't really care what these allegedly successful type CEOs, famous influencers have to say. I'm honestly more interested in the struggles of common people that do authentic life. And that's the thing. It's like, I feel that uh, it's, it's a perception that if you're in a relationship, if you're actually going through life, you know, day by day, a lot of like what they talk about, and this is like what's insane to me, where people can listen to this and say, oh yes, I'm going through a divorce, but I'm still willingly like in business with uh, like my ex and we're perfectly fine. Like I, I don't mind lying to people uh, like day to day and I can't bear the fact that like we're getting a divorce, but I'm not going to tell anybody about it. And all you're thinking about is, like, your next gig. Like, you can't just take a st I could not live. I, I know. I couldn't either. Like, just taking a step back. And I and nobody, and what's crazy is that nobody is, is talking about the faults of, like, where they screwed up. You know, and this is where I think we're going to get a lot of insight since probably Heidi is, like, on, I guess, another relationship that was also uh, very public. Nobody's talking about how that's a mistake, you know, like where that doesn't take a toll along the way. Like they're very hush hush. Oh, yeah, that would be a whole new book. Um, like how, hey, you know what? Um, the advice that we gave to people, uh, we we were going through our own things and we thought and there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know what? I screwed up. Uh, this is something that I thought my confidence would be enough, but it wasn't. Um, but like nobody talks about that. That's that's what's weird to me. Like, like where you know you have these two divorced people, um, like going through very similar things, and nobody's like, hey, you know what? Uh, that I think needs to take a backseat. Uh, social media, like because I'm going through something. They they almost like want to profit and like profit off of the situation that's going on um and that's kind of kind of gross <laughs> yeah and of you know dave and i having any communication there was very little and then uh may 21st arrived and that is when chris and i decided to announce our divorce publicly and life was you know just going on for me as normal and then about a week and a half later so you're saying this relationship, I'm not sure how long, uh, like, but you're saying that everything was normal. It was perfectly fine. Like, I, I can tell you, um, and mind you, I haven't been married that long. Like, I, I haven't, it's my first relationship. I'll be honest with you. I can't really give good advice. I can only give advice that I've lived. And, you know, I always, you know, preface this that, you know, it's not for everybody and people need to like kind of find out their their own truths through like trial and error but i can i at least know myself enough that we've been married we dated for one and then we've been married for two so like all together three years and that's like baby compared to um like what th these people have been together for 16 years you know and he like the relationship I have with my husband is very unique, I guess, because he was, I was very much into studies. I was very, um, like, I wasn't a relationship person because I was terrified. I was terrified of being in a relationship. And then also, it, like, I just wanted to focus on my school, blah, blah, blah. So that's why when I give advice, I give it very, um, like, cautiously, because that's not the case that everybody's in. And, but I can tell you, at least from my perspective, life would not go on. Um, oh, that's great. Congratulations, Chumpy. Oh, man, I'm going to have to ask you for advice. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, and, and that's the thing. I cannot imagine with, like, the baby three years that I have been in that life would be the same after if, if for whatever reason, right? Don't, like, get me wrong in this sense where... Of course, like we all have our purposes in life and, and I do, I adore my husband. I would, you know, go to the ends of the earth with him, but I also give him the grace that he's a human being and uh, I'm a human being. And if there's ever a point where 
you know, like, he would seek happiness, like, not being married together, and I would have to eventually, like, find peace with that, you know, even thinking about it, my heart, like, tears out of my chest, because even the notion of it, it's, it's kind of very crippling, but I can at least make peace or understand that my life would not be the same, you know, I, I can't, you know, so, like, the idea that she's like, yeah, we announced our divorce, and then, you know, life just happened, it just, it's, <laughs> Like I, I can't. No matter how much of a strong, independent woman you want it to to be, I I can't. I I can't. Like, that's not like fathomable. Especially the times that you spent. That's because you have a relationship, not a business partnership. <laughs> exactly. Like, I I cannot imagine that. And see, this is moments where I feel like, okay, Heidi's talking to the camera. She's not. You know, this is a nice thing to say, and it's probably, like, peppered with spite for her ex-husband, but, I mean, dang. Like, I guess, too, I'm kind of, like, a squishy human being in that sense, where I do get attached. Like, heck, I, I get a potted plant, and I, like, get really sad when <laughs> I inevitably, like, somehow accidentally kill it, um, and then I have, like, a little baby funeral for it, because I, uh... <laughs> I don't have a green thumb. So I, I do acknowledge that I am very emotional, but I don't think I can ever say, like, yep, like, my my relationship's over and everything is perfectly fine. Plants go to my wife tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's basically, I don't have a garden, I have a graveyard. That's basically. <laughs> All right, Heidi, come on, give, give us that, that info. Let's go. <laughs> I was so shocked when I opened up my Instagram to see that Dave Hollis and Rachel Hollis were also getting a divorce, which was like, I mean, I, I knew nothing about them, um, but the very little that I did know it was, it was crazy. Cause I do remember a couple times when Chris and I were going through after Dave and I had connected, I would show Chris their stuff online. I'd be like, look how we work so well together. Like I actually would say, why can't, cause Nick, listen, I mean, true story. You were there for so, all of our shoots. And the shoots were some of the hardest times for me and Chris. And this is something the world doesn't know. Right. And you got to witness the literal, like, okay, we got to break down set for an hour and a half while Chris and Heidi go figure their out. crap out. Yeah. yeah. And I would see, I actually would see them shoot videos together. And I would show Chris and say, look how well they work together, which is to me. Are you kidding me? Like, if if you've seen the snippets of even, like, how they, how, see, this is how I know this woman is delusional. How is it that you can go from, like, one relationship of being like, hey, this didn't work, and we were a business partnership, and, you know, and never think, like, twice about jumping into the same one? Like, I, I can't. Like, really? Like, you know what it takes, and um, how... Um, you never really thought, uh, especially that you and your ex-husband were showing up for the camera. You never really thought that this couple was showing up for the camera either. Like, it's kind of like a magician looking at another magician and not at least having some semblance of an idea that, oh, this is all, you know, a trick. Being like, oh my gosh, like, the, the magic is real. It's like, no, like, you, come on. Like, you really, in the back of your mind, like, never saw the telltale signs of that this was probably a fa I, I'm not even into this, like, circle of things. And, you know, I can tell that, like, Rachel and Dave did not like each other in any way. They were very snarky to each other. Um, honestly, like, I just think the world just caught up to them. And for... <laughs> For Heidi to be like, oh, shock, gasp, really? Them? Oh, look, here's the thing. A real marriage takes hard work and real authentic communication. I don't understand how people like this who literally lie to people for their job can. And I think that's what it is. It's because they get paid to do this. Like, like it's almost like an actor, um, like, showing. And it's a Photoshop version of life. Like, I... And you kind of see the consequences of it and how money really can't buy you, you know, I, it's, it's a cheesy example, but I don't think really money can buy you that sense of security, even 
when you have all the opportunity in the world if your base isn't you know fulfilling and I think that's just what it is like you know we all have needs we all have like all these things but I think people can kind of look at this and be like oh wow so even being rich and being you know successfully um like on the internet doesn't answer all of your life's problems and I think that's kind of what they're missing which is something because I can understand this from teenagers <laughs> like I'm not that old like in that sense like I'm 28 so like I was kind of brought up in that internet age influencers I guess they got popular what like uh, seven ten years ago I guess like uh but like these are people in there like <laughs> wait money doesn't solve all your problems I know right um go figure um like I won't shake it like where money and finances and stuff like that especially I learned early on in the relationship having I guess communication that way of being on the same path or at least having uh, similar goals and kind of uh like compromising but also making sure that um you guys are all on the same page whatever it is that you feel I think lying or covering up things and stuff like that that's not the way to go um but uh I I really can't believe uh that Heidi would be this delusional like these are in their mid-30s you know and I and that they have children these people have children they're sprouting many many people and they're acting so brand new to like this idea. <laughs> like then seeing that they're going through a divorce was such an eye opener to me that like what you see isn't always. Oh, those poor kids. Oh, they, they wrap their kids in this too. Don't think that they're safe. Like they do podcasts and all that stuff. Oh yeah, they're. They're mommy bloggers, and the same with uh, Mr. Dave over here. He has, like, a whole segment with his three-year-old. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was part of the rant, too, that I didn't show you guys, but um, there was a whole – oh, it was heartbreaking. I don't think I can see it. I, I don't have any kids, so it's not a part of – like, it's not fair for me to commentate on it because I don't have children so I think like I would leave that to people who actually have children to commentate on it but there was a part where he was talking in his rants and you could just kind of hear his three-year-old like crying for him and asking him like for breakfast but he was still <laughs> yeah start the kick starter for <laughs> for therapy bills oh my gosh oh geez just which is another conversation a lot of people say, you know, where a lot of the times, like, these kids, they don't have consent, you know, because they're so young, but they have, like, a camera in their face, and there are other commentators that are parents that they talked about how, um, basically, uh, when he's asking them to go away, they're so used to having a camera in their face that they are too young to understand, like, that, um, they're not performing because they're so used to having to performing for the camera so a lot of what they're doing is kind of acting cute to like have their dad's attention because that's like the positive reinforcement that they've been taught that oh if dad's not paying attention to me if I act cute or cuter or try and get his attention with something cute then he'll pay attention to me but that's not something that, at least for me, I can't speak on. Um, but it's it's interesting. You can find, uh, yeah, they've been kind of. It's just kind of um, where it's not even like child actors anymore. Where at least with child actors, they go on set and they go home at some point, you know, and they have like that segregation. It's it's kind of like um, there are there's some really good, especially with like the Ace Family. That's like a popular family on YouTube. You can find like pretty good critiques on it from people who have you know they're they were child stars and they kind of see like the similar behaviors of um there's this one youtuber specifically who she works with uh public relations um especially with uh child care and stuff um where she comments on you know making more protective laws to uh help because it's true they earn all this money and you know because of their children's cuteness but then when the children grow up they don't see any of that money at all um but but yeah
was real. Now, what Chris and I delivered on camera, and you know this, Nick, was real. But, like, you didn't get to see all of the real. You didn't get was to see it, though? Was it real? Now, looking back at videos, I look at some of my mic. Oh, my God. Josh, if someone didn't watch this video and say they're getting divorced, I'm like, they're crazy. Because we were, there was tension there. Um, so all of that. So today, it was they, real. You know, I, I saw their message. I actually. Honestly, I'm very curious and I will look for it. I'm kind of curious about her and Chris's. So that'll be like for another time. So, but I'm writing a note down. Um, so for our next stream, maybe we can like look at look at there if it's true. I want to see if we could not sense out the uh, the tension. Had I was sent by Susan, someone that works with me, both of their podcasts immediately after Dave's and Rachel's, and for some reason I just had an idea in my head. It was not right, but I had an idea in my head that he left her. I, I don't know why. I just had listened to the tone, and I think it was she. You know, was there was. Whatever had been said, I just thought that she had, and so I actually sent her over direct message, and this is about that long, because I, you know, in, in my relationship, there's no wrong, I've, I've left one marriage and one marriage. Oh, sorry, the audio cut so off. I, I have, no, I'm not offended either way, but it, I, uh, in my marriage with Chris, I was technically the one that did not choose to leave. And so it was, I actually felt bad for her. And I sent her this big, long message over direct message. And she never saw it. I don't think she's seen it to this day. But um, Dave, I sent Girl, why you be messaging on somebody else's relationship? Like, can you imagine? Like, it, well, then again, you know what? They chose to make it public. And they also made their relationship public. But I would never imagine. Does she even know her? Yeah, that's the thing. She just said that she didn't even know who Rachel was. And then so what? When they announced their divorce, then she has the gall to like direct message her? Like, okay. Like, and even then, why would you direct message her if Dave was, you thought Dave was the one who divorced her? Apparently in the, his book, and this is why I know this intel, he talks about how it wasn't his choice to get divorced, that it was all Rachel's bad idea, I guess. Um, so that's interesting that, uh, Heidi is also taking that, um, narrative being like, oh, well, you know, my husband divorced me. I didn't divorce my husband because they also, they're part of religious circles. So a lot of their narrative, they don't take responsibility for their marriage failing, not so much as maybe a psychological coping mechanism, but I also think it's because of their fan base. They talk about their spirituality and they do sell their books to Christian, uh, like uh, Christian publishing agencies. So there's also a theoretical like conspiracy theories that they, uh, both Heidi and Dave don't claim like that they were the ones who initiated divorce because that would look bad. So they're basically taking victimhood for the divorce. So then people don't um, basically uh, blame them and think that they committed like a sin in the eyes of like their community sort of thing him a message too because he and I had a connection I'd never talked to her and but my message to him was like I'm so sorry for all you're going through hope you're well that was it like because in my uh-huh so you send the, yeah because you don't have a connection with uh Rachel but you send her like a paragraph long like message which she never saw but with with Dave you reached out to him okay all right in my mind I thought this guy that I don't know and I have no desire to get to know and I don't want to date had like he was not some I just was not in the place to want to date and I didn't think he would be the kind of person I would date um really no I didn't had no clue and I think a lot of it is because when I was outside of a marriage with Chris where I was in the fitness industry I love how the cameraman is like really <gasps> gasp like oh i wish i had this little pikachu picture where it's just like the gasping pikachu i think i'm gonna need to have that on file like <gasps> so maybe i automatically thought that's who i was supposed to be with with somebody that was in the fitness world which i don't know i just didn't really like and i also didn't know that i ever wanted to be married again so the the level of interest in a relationship was like a negative two for me and not because of him but and I didn't know anything about him. Um, so he had, he was the one, he replied back and said, yeah, it's been a crazy couple months. So I didn't know anything about him, but I'm going to like plug his book and tell him that 
I hate how much I'm enjoying this drama. I know, Chumpy, completely. I understand. And that's why I always have to be doing something. Um, and I'm really glad because I kind of, it's one of those things where it feels like this Da Vinci code of crazy. Like where you have these two people that, okay, they start relationship advice. And then it's like, okay, like, and, and this is why it's so entertaining because of how hypocritical the whole thing is <laughs> where you have these two people that they're like, okay, we're going to go into business with helping couples. Oh, our advice is bad and we're getting a divorce. Cool. And then here swoops in this other couple who is also an influencer couple who's also getting a divorce. And then this like kind of like game of, of thrones, like allegiance of two people um, like merging their uh, powers of hypocrisy out of this basically scandal, the way they can sell their books on dealing with divorce. And you have no idea. Rachel came out with a book too. And like it is, I think it was called, and it was before Dave's, like right after. And what's funny is that the book initially, it was about the pandemic and like going into business during the pandemic but they were kind of like mm, like maybe that's not a good look because you're basically trying to profit off of something that's like a problem like a worldwide problem so she changed the theme of it <laughs> to divorce instead i think it was called oh man i can probably look it up real quick excuse me excuse my tippy tapping um sorry i literally have to put uh no this is all of like her older books but there was one that she recently came out with didn't see that coming yes that's the one so didn't see that coming was uh her divorce book um yeah yeah that that was her oh wait is it free now <gasps> the audiobook is free Ooh, ouch Ouch, ouch. Oh, I guess because of uh, Audible. Okay, I did. I was like, ooh, girl. But yeah, putting your life back together when your world falls apart. Oh, initially, it was about the pandemic, but then she made it about her divorce. So basically, uh, so you have her being like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. But then Dave is like being like, well, you're the one who asked for a divorce. So, you know, wait, wait. So I guess she did see it. Um. <laughs> No, and what's funny is, like, she published the book three months after, I believe, um, she announced it, so, which, in publishing terms, is very fast, uh, because it's like, huh, how can you write a book? It's basically, she was writing a book before she even <laughs> let Dave know, that's kind of, like, the fan theory, that she was planning her divorce all this time, yeah, so, it was literally, like, announced the divorce, and then released this book. Um, and they did that because also it was in the timeline of when their Rise Together conference was supposed to happen. So it was a business move because it's like, okay, they can't make, they have to postpone this conference, which is inevitably going to lose money because it was supposed to be a marriage conference. They're getting a divorce, but, oh, well, you may not get this conference, but here's this book to like hold you over while we like figure things out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, and then she came out with the book, and then uh, Heidi and Dave announced that they were dating, so <laughs> I'm just waiting for the wedding, and then, like, how she's probably gonna have, like, some sort of wedding planner, like, something to, <laughs> oh, boy, like, how to, how to, like, plan your influencer wedding, um, just wait for it, yep. Month or crazy month, thanks for the outreach. That was it. And I, you know, kind of a thing. And then I, you know, he sent, whatever he sent, I sent a message back to him and said, hey, just so you know, this is why Chris and I did not, this is why I ignored you because we've been going through this for a year. We didn't want to tell the world. We felt like it wouldn't be a good idea. And I think this was a couple weeks later, like four weeks after he had announced, then he had said, I totally understand, no harm done. Hey, if you're ever in the mood to podcast about divorce, let me know. If you're ever going to be in Texas, and I'm like, man, like, like, I don't know why, but that I really hate that. 
like that idea that you think your life is so important that we all need to know exactly how to be just like you in every moment of your life. No, and that's what's crazy. It's that, like, I can understand, um, like, personally, I like, um, I guess, not so much biographies, but people who have, I guess, like, interesting professions or um, like even there's uh, Elvira, the um, like TV personality, she's coming out with, or she came out with a memoir um, and the same, oh, there was another memoir um, that, uh, oh, Ron Perlman, the actor, because he talks a lot about how um, like the relationship he had with Guillermo del Toro, who like he's like a favorite director of mine, who like in and of itself, like if you read their biographies, they, they've led very interesting, unique lives, and it's kind of like this capsule of time, but never in their books do they talk about, like, yes, and you can be just like me for the easy price of twenty nine ninety nine. you know, like, where I feel like you can either like them or not, and you can take the book or leave it, but I think what makes it fascinating is how unique it is um, to kind of like read what this person was like or how they've at least envisioned their life in some way or another but I feel like all of this stuff is so bland and so like one size fits all that it doesn't fit anybody like nobody can realistically be like this but at the same time you write what you know and so you have Nick Offerman doing his carpentry call but, oh yeah it will change your life yeah excuse me do you assume that my life sucks that much it's true like and I think exactly one size fits all that fits no one exactly and and I think and you can still critique it and I think that's what's amazing about stuff like that it's that like there's going to be your audience there's going to be somebody who's going to like it for you but th at the same flip of the coin there's going to be somebody who doesn't like it for you but it's still you and this whole thing of like pitching it because it's going to change your life who's to say and it's not humble at all and I think that's that's what uh, sounds so icky about it. It's that it comes off with this air of like, I'm better than you. But in and of itself, I think the only difference is that like a lot of these people, they just have money. But what else do you have? Like, w what can you offer like anybody else besides y your finances, your lifestyle possibly? Um, honestly, Heidi, I would love to learn about your workout routine because like those arms, girl, like... Yes, like I like there's certain things that I can acknowledge where somebody has like kind of a formula to to um, maybe attaining things or but with life like that's that's a very big question mark. And I don't know. I don't think anybody really has that answer. You know, it's not to say like that you haven't lived or experienced things in a way that is is valuable. I'm sure it can. But I don't know. Like but they are into it to make money, exactly. So they make it vague enough uh, that some people can relate some way fortune cookie style, not to actually impart, and yeah, she has some guns. <laughs> yeah. It's like, where's the gun show? <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, I, I agree. It's very, um, and mind you, I'm into tarot cards. I do like it, but I can also acknowledge that it's vague enough that um, I want to say doing tarot cards, it's very much like an 80-20 rule, you know, where like the cards say 20% and then you fill in um, like a lot of like what it means to you or if it doesn't. So like that's that's why I kind of use them as a meditative thing. Now, some people, they do like it in, in a different way and, and they practice in different ways that are like beneficial to them. And um, but I, I think a lot of the times that's what these self-help books end up being um it's it's like the 80 20 rule where it's like yeah they say things and it could hit home and it couldn't but I think it's a really big problem when people think that they have like a hundred percent of like the answers because the more people that can relate in some ways means it's more so exactly and that's that's really yeah when Dave talks about like how his dream is to help other people with his book then why put the $18, like, why does it have to be this $18 of, like, uh, like, entrance fee if, if you just want to fulfill and help people, you know?
Like, even I know Savvy talked about that in her YouTube channel where she was like, so why don't you donate it? You know, like uh, she said a really good uh, promotion for his book would have been uh, buy one, um, donate two. So it's kind of for every book purchase, then like uh, he his company will donate to to like either a school, a college, a library. So then more people and then you feel like you're impacting and stuff if he really believed in his work. But she gave that really good advice because she she was like into like she's published books and stuff and I was like oh yeah like because then that's putting action to your words you know I like to take stuff that I read and think about of situations or people where it wouldn't apply and if I can easily find some then that advice is not good yeah yeah I think it's a good uh, thought exercise you know I I completely agree crazy enough I'm going to be in Texas. So I was flying out to go meet with Donald Driver mm -hmm. um, for some business stuff that Donald and I were doing at the time um, in Dallas like a week later. So I responded to Dave and said, I'm actually going to be in Dallas in a week. What a coincidence. So I can hop a flight over to Austin, stop by. We can podcast about divorce because talking about the things that are hard is the most therapeutic for you. And I, that's kind of what we had both agreed, you know, would might. And he was like, listen, we can press record. And if it's a crapshoot, then we're going to delete it, you know, or we can edit anything. I would love to play that podcast, but as you're going to hear, it never happened. <laughs> Talking about things that are, are so difficult. So. Out, but let's at least try to record a podcast. So I showed up at his house. Yeah, I mean, Heidi, how can it be difficult if you just said that life just continued on after your divorce? <laughs> on, are you ready for the date? July 19th, 2020. How does she remember these? I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. See, this is where Chumpy, I think we're on to something. This is so scripted. I can't even remember. I, I literally had to look at my calendar to even remember today was Monday. When I showed up at Dave Hollis's house, we didn't even, we had not even had a phone conversation. It was just over text. I had Noah was asleep, taking a nap. His kids were away at camp and Noah is uh, his daughter, like, so he had his daughter, like, there. I remember pulling up in his driveway, and I remember seeing him come out of the house to greet me, and right away I'm like, damn, like, he's actually attractive. <laughs> that is so sad. Can you imagine, like, you're going... I'm just sorry because like can you imagine having this whole social media presence and stuff and like where like you know like your whole thing and and then somebody comes to like interview like with you and then it's like damn like you're not as fugly as I thought you were gonna be like that's so sad okay to be fair if these people have calendar appointments and and this was an event it may well have been in her calendar it was only a year ago please don't make me defend them oh no Oh no, it's perfectly fine. Yes, that makes that makes sense. Okay, I'm glad because sometimes I feel like it's like, wait a second, like, am I just irresponsible human being that I just never know what's going on? But yes, that's fair, especially that they are uh, influencer types, that they have um, like a lot of uh, social events. Yeah, I can totally buy that. No, it's okay. We can we can do a devil's advocate. You know, like I think it's only a fair shake, especially that they're not here to defend themselves. I think I think we need to give them a fair fair, fair shake. <laughs> <laughs> I was so serious and focused. Eye on the road, which I did not expect. I don't know why. Probably because I just wasn't looking for that. But he, um, I thought he, was, I thought he was five eight, and maybe it's because I was married. Oh my gosh! Why? Can can anybody like really? explain to me what the big deal with height is when it comes to like I don't know why like that is so superficial and dumb to me like like it's not like oh he was so sweet and you know I was very uh like fearful because or nervous because I've never really met him before but he was he really opened up to me and he was very authentic but, like, the first thing you're going to tell... Oh, my gosh, so embarrassing. <laughs> like, I really don't... It's, like, the same, like... Um, I. It's just something I don't... I don't know, maybe because I'm a very... Uh, 
a spacey person that it's not really something that I look like I've never really looked at a human being uh, two things like two two main things that I'm terrible at is guessing somebody's age or their height like I it's just maybe something that I'm just really naive about but okay Heidi shoot your shot I guess I don't know married to Chris who's 5'8 Dave is 6'4 and then hair so Dave's like six five and a half he is so tall so tall um, and so I, but I could tell he wasn't in a happy, he was just, you could tell he was hurting. And so I walked up and I'm like, how? Oh, and ladies that focus on height, how is that different than saying, ooh, that woman isn't good looking enough for me because of interphysical characteristic that they have no control over? I know, exactly. Like, uh, like, uh, it does, it just feels like I can understand maybe what she means is that like he's like a tree person where it's like he's he's very very tall but but still it's not really uh, like when you're first meeting a person and it, oh and then she's comparing uh to her ex-husband on top of that where it's like Haha, my new boyfriend is taller than you it's like kind of like oh like imagine because i think of it this way um like imagine if somebody else compared like let's say rachel and uh and nubu like being like, oh, when I met Heidi, she was so much more fit than my ex-wife. People would be up in arms. Like I just like to at least give like a fairness and a balance to the, you know, like each couple, you know. But yeah, I, I completely agree. It's kind of like, ooh. How are you doing? And he was just like, not good. Not good at all. And it, we walked through the house. He took me to where the, we were going to podcast. I think he actually gave me a tour of the house first. He was trying not to cry. He was trying to get his mind off of talking about what we were talking about. Oh, that's so sad. Where it's can you imagine? Like this is like a business meeting. This is a business. So it's like here's the living room. Here's the dining room. This is my crying corner. Okay, we're gonna go film a podcast. Oh, Dave, no, no. Oh God. Oh, you missed that. Oh, so basically, <laughs> yeah, so basically um, she said that he gave her a tour because he records the podcast in his house. So they're meeting at his house. And so he's giving her a tour. But she said that basically uh, he's he's trying not to cry, basically, during their, um, yeah, during because they're going to talk about divorce, I guess. And it's still, which honestly, I don't want to mock somebody's, you know, because in and of itself, it is a, a traumatic thing. You are, uh, you know, and from what he's claiming um, that he did not want the divorce, I don't want to like mock his his pain. It's just that what, what makes me, I guess, uh, like a little icky about it, it's like this is a business meeting. This isn't somebody, like he just met this person, right? So I, I think... In a professional setting, uh, I don't think it's very appropriate um, from what he's claiming. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> you caught that, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's let's see. Let's see, Heidi. And when we finally settled in the chairs that we were going to podcast in, he could not get through one sentence without breaking down crying. And he, I mean, it, it was really, really a rough thing. And so I felt like, okay, I am this person who's been through a lot. I've been through a divorce. Oh, you're also a D&D &D player? <gasps> yes, huzzah! Yes, I, um, I'm actually, funny enough, we're having our fifth session um, today. And I'm so excited. Um, it's the first time I've played an archer um, character, or a ranger, I'm sorry. I always say, I apologize. You can tell I'm, I'm new to... Uh, D and D. Are you uh, currently playing? Like, are you an active player? Um, we're we're currently playing like a uh, a homebrew, but um, I'm kind of looking for another group to like play. Um, I don't know. I keep seeing ads for uh, Curse of Strahd campaigns. I'm kind of curious. Uh, like on Roll Twenty and stuff. I've been like wanting to. Yeah, we have a group that's been playing together for about five this year. Ooh, so long time. Ooh, is it a big group? Like, do you guys have, uh, like, a big party? Or, yeah, it, just because of uh, COVID and stuff, uh, like, we do everything online. But it's a fairly new group. 
Um, and I'm like the, the green player. Yeah, to the point of being too big sometimes. <laughs> oh man, I know. I, I honestly, the biggest group I was in was seven, which was crazy. But at the same time, um, we had alternating DMs. And I think that's probably why the group was so big because two of them, they would play uh, uh, like kind of uh, DM PCs, I guess you can say, like where um, they kind of knew like the whole story, but they were more support. So if uh, like they're literally there to like keep us from dying, like too bad, uh, because we were all like level threes at that point. Um, so they would kind of like help us. It was for oh what tomb of annihilation, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah. That that for me like that was the cra that was the craziest um like one. But oh man, I love D and D. Divorce where I did choose to end a marriage. And then I went through a marriage where I, even though it maybe wasn't good for either of us towards. Wait, I thought she said that Chris was the one who initiated the divorce. Wait, did I, did I like hear that correct from, I'm confused. I thought she said that she didn't want the divorce, but that Chris, okay. Why not? Oh yeah, we did Strahd as our second campaign. I think it was after that we started actually learning how to rp better oh yeah oh yeah oh hi icy how are you doing we're listening to our, our favorite couple well our new fa new new favorite couple because our initial couple got divorced and then dave got a new boo so this is new boo. <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh i'm doing good we're just doing some needlepoint we just talked a little bit about D D. Which, by the way, like, at least as homebrews and stuff go, um, I, I'm finding more role play like, in it, I guess, because there's, like, so much lore that hasn't been, like, tapped into it. It's kind of like a work in progress homebrew. So, like, I'm finding stuff. So, yeah, so how are you doing, Icy? Icy, I always like to ask anytime you, you, like, pop in, do you need anything? Please tell me if you need anything. <laughs> Just because I want to make sure if you have any questions or anything. That's great if you have a good creative storyteller. D oh, yeah, no, and our DM is new, too. So he's, he's like, uh, he's been DMing for, like, about a year. So I kind of feel a little bit relieved because he's learning. But then we have more seasoned DMs that are uh, player characters. So it's kind of like they help him out. And then it's great because then I don't feel as, like, you know, bogged down. Because I'm like, yes, we're all learning together. <laughs> That's great. Uh Oh, be gentle. Yes, no, don't worry. I I ask a lot of questions. They're honestly great players, and they even do like extra sessions and stuff. Some and also I got into D and D and Beyond, which like building characters that way for a new player. It was great. Um, it was like a great intro. Um, and the same with like my dice rolls and stuff, because I never really played a uh, a rogue before, or I'm sorry, a ranger. Um. So it helped me a lot with like stats and especially that uh, I have a bow and stuff. So what uh, class do you play, Chumpy? Oh, yes, I see. Don't don't let me deter you with uh, the D&D &D talk if you need to. Um, I'm here for you. We support each other through these times. Oh, no, no need to apologize at all. Oh, no, no, this is an open chat, like, it's because Icy's been there, um, like, when we would talk about, like, relationship advice and stuff, so that's what would, like, spur on, so we would hear crazy things that Rachel and Dave would say, and then we would talk about, like, relationship stuff, so I always want to give space in case Icy needs, needs anything, or the same with, uh, Jess, Cricket, um, like, uh, there's kind of, they, they are, they're like my OGs, like from the stream. So for, uh, I don't know, I'm just, yeah, I guess things are getting, um, yeah, a whole lot of ums. Okay. If like, you don't want to get into it, like, just let me know. We can always talk about, um, like other things. Like, I never want to like pressure you in case like you want to talk about it, uh, another time or, but it's perfectly okay. You know, by the end of it, this is, this is your space, you know? 
<laughs> basically listen to nothing Dave and crazy guys say. Yeah, just do the opposite. Do the opposite of whatever they say. Um, and now we're slowly learning that new boo is kind of the same thing. Like, <laughs> we're, oh, if you don't think, now what's funny is, uh, I see, because you're just coming in here, um, apparently new boo was also a part of another couple, power couple, um, that they would podcast and stuff. So I'm going to get into that content too. So that probably next stream we can talk about more crazy things. <laughs> Question. Oh my. Huh? Oh yes. I see. Go ahead. Any question. Don't worry. Your Athena is here. I always, I love that you called me that. But I always feel like such a fraud. <laughs> uh, that's like a running joke. That uh, I am like the Athena of knowledge. But I'm not. I'm really not. I'm just, just a normal gal out here doing grandma crafts. And being bad at art so but yes go ahead with your your questions don't don't too worry exactly because love is a battlefield okay <laughs> that's what that <laughs> was it at the i got the goddesses confused probably I apologize. It's been a while. Greek mythology. I love Greek mythology, but there just came a point I got it confused. I, I'm so sorry. Okay, so is it okay to have two people at the same time? Because I can't choose. Oh, okay. So I personally um, uh, be open with both um, because it could get ugly. Feelings could get hurt. Think about it in the sense of even if you're just initially talking to people, like, they all have to be on the same page, because it's unfair. I mean, I think, um, honesty is, is, and transparency with what's going on, because you don't want to, um, mislead, um, anybody, and if you're not sure, that's never a bad place to be, um, it's just that everybody needs to know, what's going on um because uh think about the situation if you were on the other end if you were investing time into somebody and talking to somebody with the idea just the notion of assuming that you guys were monogamous or if i was on the other end assuming that you guys were in an open relationship and then that other person turning on you and being mad you know, for decisions that you were making, but, like, nobody's being clear. Like, that's that's basically where I think a lot of heartache comes from, from what I've seen, especially with my friends, um, when, because they have more dating experience than me, and a lot of the conversations that we would have, it was basically where people get hurt because, like, the lines weren't drawn, and drawing the lines does not mean that, like, the relationship is over, and, oh, this is it, like, this is, you know, but people need to kind of know, and if the moment you say, well, if I'm going to draw the lines in the sand, then that person is gone, then you have to be kind of be at peace with that, that that person, like, wasn't there for you, you know, like, you, you have to, like, really be honest about that, because it's better to be honest and then let that person go than live up to this lie, you know, or lying by omission, basically, um, oh my god, what a god, so true, I should be more open, but, and that's the thing, it, it is, from what I understand from what little information you're giving me, um, it, it it's, it's ten times easier, because think of the possible pain that you would be inflicting on not only one person, but yourself, but then also the other person, and, if you're not sure, then, you know, th there's nothing, you can't be punished for not being sure, but you can be held responsible for n keeping information uh, from that other person, because it's misleading, and I doubt that's what you would want for somebody to do to you, and then, um, like, for you uh, to inflict on somebody else. Um, I remember telling you about this for the first time, I should have took your advice from the get oh, no and that's fine I think just being because a lot of people say like oh just be yourself be but I think there's like a fear like a very understandable fear of like well of a consequence but that the consequence is gonna happen it's just that because really realistically the more time you spend with 
with um, each person, you're inevitably going to invest all of that energy and time into two people, and then the other person's going to inevitably know. Or, it's it, like, there's no way for you to, like, keep your options open without acting or showing that you're keeping your options open, <laughs> you know? Like, why not just be upfront and honest and tell this person, hey, I want to keep my options open. And then they're like, oh, cool, that's not for me, bye. And then that's it. That's the basically... <laughs> Um, what do you eat to get this wise? Um, honest to God, caffeine helps. <laughs> um, and, and that's the thing, just be, <laughs> honestly, it's because I've seen it go down. I'm sorry I stopped sewing. I'm sorry I got serious because I, <laughs> because I, I understand that you mean well and that, like, you're just looking out for maybe the other person's feelings or that you don't want to hurt them. But in and of itself, um, somebody doesn't want to be put in a race that they don't even know that they're in. <laughs> like, just because I've seen it go down in really bad ways, like, especially once online dating became, like, a super big thing. Um, it's hurtful. It's it's a hurtful thing when you f basically, uh, you're competing with somebody and then, like, you don't even know. And then it's also a burden on you because you feel bad but for a situation that you kind of put yourself in, if that makes sense. Um, wait, are you telling us that open, open and honest communication is good for relationships? I mean, I think it's because a lot of, uh, especially with younger, <laughs> I know, I, I, I'm sorry, I talk like a 90 year old woman, maybe the cross stitching makes sense now. Um, but especially with uh, it being so quick, right so to get a date and things like that it, it, there's times where it's literally like a desert of like oh i'm not talking to anybody and i i'm never gonna find somebody and then let's say you get on a dating website or you even meet friends or something and then it's like oh look i found people like people who are interested in me and oh what do i do in this situation because when am i going to get this chance again and i'm first finding out um like what it like I'm getting to know these people so there's no uh consequence I guess there's no monogamy talk because we're in the early stages but you still even in that early stage need to set up for success if that makes sense um and you're not a bad person because it's it's so sometimes it's so early or you know you're not sure where it's going but you will thank yourself for escaping all of the drama <laughs> because there is possible drama to be had if not everyone's on the same page you know and it is better i see trust me because i've seen it go down it is 10 times better to just be upfront with where you're at than you know opening up kind of these like pandora boxes of of like well you know like it's still early and blah 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 oh question yes Sorry, I kind of went on a rant. <laughs> I hope I hope what I'm saying it makes sense. Eek. Seen it go down, man. It's it's messy. <laughs> oh, I'll lift my mic and so. Can I have both and just share myself 50-50? Okay, but to be honest, it's actually five, but yeah, that's another story. Okay, so you need to be honest. I mean, I think just be honest with where you're at with each person and see where they're at. Even shape it like this, right? So you have your five, right? Um, I wish I had like my little D&D &D pieces. <laughs> like, oh no, I wish I had props for this. So you have your five, but are they all five that they're in the same boat? And that's like what you really need to like ask yourself. Because even if one out of those five is looking for a monogamous, like, oh, I want to go at this, like where I'm only talking to you and this is what it is. Like, it's not, it's not five anymore, it's four. Because like, especially early on you kind of want to come up with like something to like where you you guys are on even ground right so um 
even if it's early on and you can even just say that be like hey you know what like I'm talking to other people um like you know are you looking for something serious or do you want a monogamous person or are you in the same boat as me where you're dating around and oh to be honest I'm not doing anything but I don't know how to say no is the problem and that's you gotta learn because saying no um now is going to save you time and that's like really what you're playing with it's time and energy those are two things i think in any relationship whether it's a friendship whether it's business whatever it is i really adamantly believe that i am so far out of the dating game that i don't have advice but this is all wise yeah because you're if you're looking for options that's all that you're looking for but are you looking for a relationship? And does that mean monogamy or not? Like, and that's the thing, what you're looking for in a partner is what you want to offer, right? So for example, for me, like I'm, I am a monogamous person. And for me, it is a deal breaker. When I was first talking to my husband, if he was talking to somebody else, or other people, personally, I wouldn't want to pursue it because I that's what I want right? But I also have friends who are in polyamorous relationships and a big part of their identity or their romantic relationship is to not be monogamous. And like there's certain, and it doesn't have to be like, hey, can we get married on our first date? Like I'm not talking about that. Like there's a lot of extreme examples where people talk about, but you have to set up the stage on what it is the other person wants and if it matches up with you and hiding that and you know in favor of increasing your options you're really just getting nowhere fast like because by the end of it you want something whatever that is whether it's being with a person um like seeking marriage whether you just want to uh like have a one night stand whether um like let's say uh you want to have like a bigger dating pool but like if you're already asking if it's okay like, that's not something to ask me. That's something to ask the five people, you know? Like, and if you're afraid that it'll knock down your options, you know, it it doesn't really seem that, like, those options are there for you anyway, if that makes sense. I actually want to decrease my options. Yeah, and that's the thing. Um, If your goal is to find a relationship, right? So you want, even if that doesn't necessarily mean marriage, I'm sorry, I stopped sewing. I'm sorry, I got really into this. I see, this is what happens. Um, Like if you want to pursue a relationship, whatever that means to you, what's wrong with being upfront about it? And, you know, like having people not fit that narrative, like, that just means that person wasn't there for you. Like, the only thing is you're cutting the time. You're just saying, hey, th- like, you f- you're going to figure it out three months from now, you know, if you just continue to delay the question. But isn't it better to figure that out in a week rather than three months? You know, clearly the best method is to lock them all <laughs> lock them all in a steel cage and see which one comes out. <laughs> Uh, or you can do what Dave and Heidi do and just like, write a book together and like get into business. <laughs> this is clearly, you know what, Chumpy? Like, are you, can I guess, like, are in D&D, are you the barbarian? That seems like a very barbarian. <laughs> or, or I can even see a rogue do that. <laughs> now I'm curious about your, your D&D class. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only thing I, oh, I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry. Oh no, I wouldn't be able to play Barbarian, nor (laughs) P-Value. I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry if I went on a tangent or anything. Um, yeah, man, just, uh, just be honest, you know, be as honest and quickly as possible. And you know what? It's, it's better. It is 10 times better to, because what's the worst that can happen? Like, um, like the person's like, oh, that's not for me. Okay. And then you're closer to finding it was, you're always giving the best advice. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Good, good. Alrighty. Just let me know. Cause sometimes, you know, I, um, I assume things from my personal experience, but it may not match like what you're going through currently. So I would rather you, 
um, like correct me in that way and then get closer to what it is. I've been on one date with someone who didn't become my wife, so no help here. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And that's why I feel very naive because literally like my husband was my first boyfriend, but it was because it, but it wasn't out of a lack of like, it wasn't luck. It was because I was very, um, like literally anybody who was in the realm of dating, like for me in that time, it just, I just didn't pursue it because I just didn't see, you know, I sound terrible, but it just wasn't worth the hassle. And what's crazy is that when I did date my husband and stuff, it was the biggest hassle there was. It was long distance for like a good eight months. Yeah. And he's also, uh, in the military so if you want to talk about like next level test of of time and energy that that's where i'm coming from i see like relationships can test you as a person very heavily and you need to put that time and energy into having a, a love life that is just worth all of that you know because it's gonna happen you're going to um inevitably like put that in a relationship right and you might as well have like some return value in the sense of fulfillment <laughs> i guess i'm um, probably chumpy can uh talk to you about that because he he or she sorry i i'm assuming um their uh relationship like they've been in a longer relationship uh so they have the he okay thank you chumpy um he he's been in in it longer so he has possibly like more wisdom than me but for the short time I've been in a relationship I can tell you um but seriously I think I should be just like um I have to go to China for a few years and won't be able to use socials because of the Chinese leader overlord <laughs> oh no yeah and that's the thing like you have to look at your track in life and be honest about it and you know what and see uh what fits with that and your goals and stuff and and go from there and but don't feel like you have to omit those things about yourself um to succeed and i think that's what it is sometimes we're very eager to fill those roles and maybe that's just what it is maybe you have certain needs that you want to fulfill in a relationship but you can't right now but you can find that fulfillment in something else you know in companionship and friendship and stuff but i know i know we all have our needs and and it's difficult, but I promise you, um, like, being uh, transparent, and I think that's just what it is, transparent with where you're at, you're going to find people that are in a very similar situation as you and that you can connect with in a more fulfilling way, whatever that means, you know. And it is better, it is ten times better to get in touch with that and know what that means and communicate that with other people than kind of, you know, skirting around it and not thinking it's a problem. Um, and it will kind of bite you in the butt. I've seen it go down pretty bad. <laughs> You're a savage, Loki. I, I apologize. I don't mean to be. It's just, I don't know. There's just something about, um, I don't know what it is. I just, time is too short. And <laughs> like, my look on dating was I was looking for the person that would be my future wife. And so I was all in with the person I dated. Turned out my wife to be the same way. And we just kept investing in each other and building the relationship. Yeah. And honestly, that was uh, that was like the same feeling that I had where it's it's being OK and accepting that it's better to be alone. And I know this sounds kind of sad, but that's kind of where I came from and I skipped so much drama this way it's better to be alone than try and fit somebody else's like version just for the sake of companionship and like I remember there were friends of mine who they really just wanted a boyfriend or they wanted a girlfriend and the person that they were were next to they like sure they were a boyfriend and a girlfriend but they just didn't really when you kind of heard what their relationship was, it's it's kind of like, ooh, at what cost, man? Um, well, that would be news to me. <laughs> um, we're all about, oh, um, my look at day was, uh, I am he, my wife is a she. I thought you said 
first day oh oh okay okay um but yeah like basically it's it's that um yeah that's the uh like and i know it's probably because i'm like old so it's like this idea that it's like been there done that and like i i would just say it to like the way i speak to you guys i think it's like i'm talking to like my younger self here well, oh no um yeah i'm not old i'm i'm not it's just i guess because a lot i think a lot of um i'm sorry i'm sorry jumpy <laughs> i apologize you know why because i'm old in the sense of like the uh military spouses like a lot <laughs> i'm telling you there's there are babies here you're a whippersnapper yeah i know but oh thank you guys no but i am i'm like a lot of like the military wives here they're like 19 and 20 so i'm like they're they're elder <laughs> I I think that's why I I talk to you guys kind of um in that sim. Yeah, yeah, they're very young. Oh yeah, and they have kids and everything. It's it's like a whole thing. I'm probably like the only way I fit in is because I have puppies who are my furry children. No, that's fine. Like I I find it in that sense of um I just find and I think that's where I'm coming from, I see, because when I first moved here, it felt very isolating and lonely in that sense, because it's like, oh, no, like, you know, I, especially from the pandemic and stuff, um, you kind of feel like you're starting from scratch. So I never want to, like, tell you, like, oh, no, like, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't, because I feel like, you know, you have needs and, and it's okay. It's okay to like go through these things. And the only thing that I would just warn you about in that sense, it's like, I wouldn't want you to do like something in fear of like, oh, this is the only way that I can go about this. Like I'm talking to these people and they're going to like out of a fear of rejection or being lonely. Like I, I can't tell them this, like I can't be honest with, and that's not necessarily true because I've seen it firsthand at least that like the more honest that you are the the easier you'll find people to like fulfill that um and it might not happen at first but you'll get closer to it and if anything you just have to find different resources you know as far as like let's say if you want to go out if you want to like enjoy specific hobbies with somebody and you know it it may take some time but it it'll happen you know, it just, just takes a little bit of, um, uh, my brother and brother-in-law are in the Navy and have to deploy, and I can't imagine that, oh, yeah, like, that's the thing, it's, how can I say this, like, it's not easy, but you adapt, and you find your new normal, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, a lot of how uh, we coped with it, and I did, this is coming from like therapy. Like I, that's why when it comes to self-help books, I'm like, eh, but I, I talk up therapy, but I'm biased. So, um, but it helped me a lot because a lot of like what helps you go through it is like you kind of plan things, you know, like it's kind of like while they're away, it feels frozen because it's like, oh no, your partner's not there and stuff, but you adapt and then you find kind of like in the distance, like of them not being there, then you kind of look forward to the future, like being like, okay, you're not going to be here for six months, but oh, when you come back for Christmas, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, you know, like kind of um, like counting down things together. And it does, I think it's very difficult, especially um, when you're very close to the person. Um, and so you have to find things to kind of fill your time. Um, it, it takes practice, like, it's not really something that, like, I can give you all the tips in the world, and it works right away, I mean, I really think he's been, like, deployed for training, I want to say t twice, and then we had the long distance, so I almost feel like I cheated, because right off the bat, like, we were long distance, so we had to find that comfort right in the beginning of our relationship, so I can't give advice for people who, like, let's say, they dated in high school or something and then they were close and you know th that's something i think that's like a whole different thing oh sorry um uh your memory is next level i don't know how you remember my name sometimes i forget my name is icy oh because i think of um i don't know why but there <laughs> the movie theater this is how i remember the movie theater that i would visit uh back home 
they had my favorite slushy was called the cosmic icy and it was like blueberry and strawberry flavored so anytime i see like your name i'm like oh it's my favorite slushy <laughs> i know that sounds kind of funny but um out of curiosity and only if you feel comfortable answering was your therapy sort of proactive or reactive because something came up for me i mean i think it was it took me a long time to find a therapist that worked for me oh i hate to say this but the first there the first therapist that i had especially after i got married was a for lack of a better this is the only way i could describe her i feel terrible but she was a feminazi i i'm sorry i know it's a very vulgar term i i i'm so sorry if i offended anybody but <laughs> she was very much because anytime i had any let's say um especially i'm a talkative person as you can <laughs> as you can tell um and so it took me a while <laughs> to uh find somebody in in like my community that uh i after that first therapist, I then looked for a therapist that was also a military spouse because a lot of the advice that I first got was, oh, you need to, you know, like talk to your husband as an equal. And no, if you have needs, you need to talk to him. And, you know, like he can't just, you know, take you for granted. And it was very, um, I guess, uplifting, but it wasn't practical because I loved my husband and I didn't think he was doing this, like to be a misogynist. It's just that we had like it's just that we have different needs you know so it was less about him being a man and it was more about finding myself and like that's the thing I felt like a lot of my sessions were about bashing him and I didn't find that pretty I felt horrible but like it wasn't helpful like I could understand where she was coming from because she was just naive to what it meant to be a military spouse because she wasn't a military spouse like she was in the community but a fem I, I'm sorry that's the only <laughs> that's the only way to describe because anytime like I would talk about let's say like oh I want more let's say like more like how do I speak to my husband about this without seeming needy or something and then <laughs> by the end of the session like we kept talking about like how men like communication and how they're like emotionally like whatever whatever like and it just I, <laughs> is militant feminist better yeah like I just didn't feel um she was a right fit for me like and I can understand because I don't have the best self-esteem in the world so I think it's just that my dynamic with her she was just being a protective person so i think the like the tactic she was trying to do was install confidence but the the confidence is like misinformed like i i just didn't feel uh it was helpful so after that i found somebody who was actually like a military wife who like was in very similar circumstances that I was in so she was able to talk from experience instead of theory if that makes sense a theory Athena literally be so funny <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I'm sorry I apologize oh I hope I didn't <laughs> oh I'm seeing that you guys are laughing um my wife and I dated in high school then went to different colleges an hour and a half apart oh god bless you but that's nothing compared to deploy no but that's the thing I think um it's it's not so much the circumstances because a lot of people they hear about it but like the day-to-day -day stuff and that's the thing it's not about what you go through because that's like a very uh superficial like thing that i'm talking about like in the sense of like oh yeah like we went through this thing but like you know what it's like um maybe it's a different circumstance to like what you guys went through but you guys checked in with each other you guys pulled through and i think like you kind of find that in your relationship like where it's like yeah you go through something but you kind of find that that balance you know a militant feminist <laughs> oh a lot of phone calls yeah yeah no and i can't even imagine like because we were very fortunate to have like things like facetime you know like video chat things like that i remember when even my parents kind of went through that's why i kind of joke around that my parents passed on the hallmark genes because 
like they had a very romantic uh, relationship also, like in like where they were neighbors in Cuba. And then my mom left when she was like five years old. And then they reconnected through letters. And so like, so imagine they held up their whole relationship like with letters. And it wasn't until like years later where like my dad escaped Cuba. And then, you know, like literally his first phone call to like my mom was hey pick me up like I'm here and she was like wait what like <laughs> um we had phones that plugged into the wall and had to wait until 9 p.m because the long distance rates went down <laughs> that's so cute you see oh that's adorable see like and you do you find love finds a way and that's I I hope uh I see like maybe it's like you you can find where and it doesn't it doesn't have to be this whole um, like Hallmark movie of a thing, but you're going to see that um, when when it's worth it, it you you will do that. Like it will like even, um, and it's not because like we're amazing saintly people that it's it's just like I don't know. It's it's something about finding somebody in your life that, and I think this happens too, like in families and um or friendships and stuff where you find somebody that even if they're going through a hard time or you know like you stick by them and you know you um you you do these things for them because you want them in your life and i think that's that's what i think a relationship is you know authentically like where yeah you go through these hard times but you know when you look back on it you're like wow like that was worth it though like, all of those things that we went through, and it was, like, missing them, whatever, like, it was always with the idea of, like, oh, we're gonna be here one day, like, one day we're gonna be married, or, you know, we're gonna have, like, these two fur babies that, like, wake us up at two o'clock in the morning, um, yeah, like, I think, and you know what, sometimes, even when you take that risk, sometimes, too, I, I don't want to make it, like, sunshine and rainbows, either, sometimes you take those risks, and you go through all those things, and, the other person is not worth that and and that's okay too because by the end of it then you find somebody um who is worth that like you then learn what you're capable of as a person like you find yourself um like kind of like being in a space where it's like wow I've done all of these things and you know what I deserve somebody who um like appreciates that and the only thing I like is apple pie. Well, that's okay. Then you find your apple pie. <laughs> By the end of it, we both say over and over that we are a team. We think and work together as a team. And I can't imagine doing life without a t my team. And, and it's true. And you know what? You even have to even give that space that, um, like, people change also. Because it, it happens. And, um but I think, I think by the end of it, it, it is genuinely, and I could be talking out of my butt because I feel like really young in the relationship and I'm still figuring things out. Um, but I've seen it. I've seen, like, I think that's why I was like scared of relationships too for a long time because a lot of people in my family, they had very ugly divorces. Like, but at the same time, it kind of taught me that when you're in a relationship, it's, it's an everyday thing. You know, you don't, a lot of people, they talk about relationships, like, it's like this fancy car, that, oh, one day I'm going to earn enough money to get this fancy car, but nobody talks about, like, oh, you have to, like, get it tuned, and you have to, like, put gas in it every day, and when you do, you have to, like, take care of it, and, like, there's more to it than just getting in the relationship, and I think that's what I would want you to let you know, I see, like, by the end of it, it's one thing being in a relationship, but you also got to keep that sucker alive. Like it's, it's one of those things where it just, it doesn't just fade to black when, you know, the, the, the companion is there. It's like, okay, yes. Yeah. Like you do have this relationship, but, um, your words, <laughs> find your apple pie. <laughs> yeah. That would be the new, uh, I'll reword the stream. Find your apple pie. <laughs> you sound wise beyond your, honest to God. It's because I've had a very, um, good examples of my oh thank you and and yeah it does it's because I've oh man like when I've said um like mostly especially even my grandparents my uh like older generations that they've gone through a lot like you know it it's a lot and when you don't gotta 
good partner that's, you know, in it for the long haul, it's, it gets, it's a lot of pain and it's a lot of discomfort. And I guess, especially since you're new, um, and you're just starting out, you know, like you're just starting out in the dating pool, like you're figuring things out. It's a very beautiful part of life, I think, because, you know, and why not, why not be honest? Why not, you know, give yourself like the good grace of, of like starting out, uh, work, huh? No wonder I've been so against getting into one myself, uh, can ha handle unnecessary. And that's the thing, like, if you are going to get into work and if it is going to happen, you might as well do it for the right reasons and be honest about what is wrong because you have your perspective because up to this point you've had all of these lessons and like uh, relationships and you've learned from them and who's to say there isn't somebody out there who's on the same page as you, you know, for whatever reason, even I come here on stream and we have something to talk about because, you know, there's like connections in life that we, we all go through. Um, and that's perfectly fine. You know, we had a stretch around 12 ish years in, uh, where we both recognized that we were drifting. So we had to sit down and work on it and come out cl uh, closer because of it, being able uh, to be open and vulnerable was a key to that. I'll use your words. <laughs> you just literally gave me everything I wanted in one first. Oh, I'm glad. Okay, whew, I feel better. Okay, guys, we're. I'm going to like write a book now. I'm gonna tell. <laughs> find your apple pie. <laughs> it's true. If you're gonna eat something, like that's <laughs> like you might as well, you know, like <laughs> save up for it. Um. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, I do. I guess I have to tell my husband we're influencers now. <laughs> I do. I tell him I come on stream and sometimes I uh, talk about our relationship and then he's like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, well, as long I guess he's happy that it's not like the feminazi um, therapy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I'll play a little bit of um, Heidi's stream just for like the last couple of minutes because I feel like I've held you guys hostage for <laughs> a little bit we're just gonna like finish her out um just to see what what she's up against i need to think about what i like about apple pie and find those things i like in an actual human <laughs> and that's the thing like i don't see what's wrong with really thinking about like without somebody influencing you and i think that's what it is sometimes you you're very desperate to f like fit that idea into like the person that's right in front of you but it's not the case like it's just gonna happen um yeah just think about what you want or what do you even want to do like I remember uh when I first started I like a really important thing to me was somebody who and it was so funny because I thought uh the long distance was going to uh like hamper that like my big thing in a personality was somebody who was kind of in the relationship persistently like in the sense of like that they wanted to be with me. And I thought, oh, if we're not physically next to each other, that's going to be a problem, I guess. But he would call every day. Like, there was not one, like, day where he, and it didn't matter. And it's not because he's, like, this this god among men. It was just something that I um, would kind of also support. So, like, it wasn't just him doing all the work. It was also, like, me showing up and doing that also and also giving him space when he needed space and yeah so it's like those things where I think you have your needs and stuff but um I don't know what she's gotten much stitching done tonight <laughs> yeah I don't think so either <laughs> I don't think so either I think because we got on uh like a lot of like discussion because it is I think like you guys uh, like especially when you come for me like uh for advice and stuff I feel I feel like oh like this is important to talk about and yeah sorry I don't think much much stitching was was going to happen but at least we talked about life <laughs> well come on you're a goddess so <laughs> of course your husband had to be a man above <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll let him know that. You have to pick the apples, core them, peel them, pick out the bad ones, cut them, bake them. Apple pie doesn't just have exact chumpy. I think honestly, yes, I completely agree. I completely, completely agree. That that's too funny. I really like that. I like how we came full circle though. 
Um, oh, wait, I'll just play Heidi really quick, and then I'll, I'll sign off uh, for you guys. <laughs> Chumpy, that was great. Towards the end, for the past the five, last half of it, I would have stayed in forever because I did not want to have another, I didn't want to deal with the things that come with divorce. I didn't want split family. I didn't want to run kids around in two different, I didn't want the stigma of being a um, twice divorced mom or woman. So basically what she's saying is like, ah, I just didn't want the social consequence of like, uh, although my grandmother did send me some apple dumplings out of the blue. So, ooh, apple dumpling sounds really nice, actually. Ooh, that does sound really good. And so I understood where he was coming from. They had been married for, or together at least, for 19 or 20 years. And for him, he's like a forever kind of a person. And so just kind of helping him, letting, I didn't even really help him. All he really needed was an ear and me giving him my feedback or hearing him and then giving feedback and assuring him that everything was going to be okay. Um, it turned into a three or four hour conversation. And at one point he was like, what are we doing? I need to turn on the podcast mic. And I'm like, you're crazy. You're not podcasting today. Neither am I. He's like, I feel bad. You're in Texas. And I'm like, I don't even care. It is totally okay. So it just was a great therapeutic conversation between the two of us that was nothing. There was no flirtation, not even close. There was just There's feeling no and that. not even. I just love how she's like prefacing. Yeah, the first time I um, met Dave, like the first thing I noticed, he was six feet tall and then he was like just a, a mess. Like we were supposed to have this business meeting, but he just kept crying and we did, just didn't even do a podcast. Like, is this really... Like, what you want out there in the ether? Like, I, I don't know. Like, eek. Oh, man. Eek. Oh, you're dead. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I do. I think the analogy was perfect. In the slightest. It was like there was relatability. Like, we had common ground. There were a lot of aspects of who we each were in our last marriage that we could relate to with each other. And so, and sometimes all you need in a place of darkness and hurt is to not feel alone. And we both had that, like we didn't feel alone. Yeah, that's the word, solidarity. Um, and so that's kind of how I, and I actually remember leaving and I had called my publicist, Molly. Do you know Molly? And I, we were talking about something. See, this is like what gives me like kind of like, oh, red alert and stuff. It's like literally like the first time that they, and it's crazy because this is exactly even how Rachel and Dave like first met each other. It was like through business again. So like this is kind of weird where it's like, yeah, our first date, like I just called my publicist and we were going to do this podcast, but like Dave was crying so much that like we just didn't even like record the podcast and then just went home. So she makes herself available for a guy in an emotional relationship distress. Nah, that's, that's totally not going after him. Oh yeah. Like, no, and at least acknowledging, at least in a professional sense, like they just met each other, right? So imagine like set the scene, right? You just announced your divorce. You are going to a uh, another influencer's house to record a podcast. The podcast does not happen. So like the day is a wash in a business sense. But even if you want to even say like, ah, uh, like, yeah, you want to be with this person that you don't even know. Like, she keeps talking about how she's hardly talked to him or anything like that. But, like, there's part of me that it just feels icky because this was all, like, a ploy for, like, doing this podcast. And then after this poor guy is in tears about his, <laughs> his divorce, you call your publicist? This is, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Sounds icky. Yeah. Manipulation. Something I think I told her I'd shot the, where we, I did, the podcast didn't happen because she cared because she's my publicist. And I, she was like, oh my gosh, you are going to marry Dave Hollis in the car. And I'm like, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what your publicist, like, I swear these women are teenagers. Like, what? Like, am I crazy? Like, this is why I talk about these things.
like on the internet because I feel crazy. Like I is it because maybe I'm so out of touch with with what influencers and stuff are maybe i just don't understand but i'm literally thinking of it like going into a business me- and maybe that's what it is maybe i don't go to enough meetings i guess but like i think honestly i would be like first of all sensitive about like this poor guy is is going through like uh, the ringer like emotionally but like i wouldn't like, I just wouldn't stick around. Like, I does that sound heartless? Like, where I don't know this person, and he's he's telling me uh, we're going to, like, film this podcast. The podcast doesn't happen. Am I just a heartless person? Maybe, unfortunately, people grow older, but not enough of them grow up. Maybe I just, I'm just a heartless human being because, like, like, I would feel, of course, compassion for what he's going through. But, like, I don't think my first, like, the jump start of, like, like, I'm in it for myself like ooh, this guy is just like I'm like wringing my hands of like of when he's going to be like emotionally available of like ooh, like um like we tried to do this business meeting but like this guy is so emotionally vulnerable to me I'm just going to like get like I'm I'm gonna get the one up on him and be in a relationship with this guy that I just met and he's he's just distraught over his divorce like that feels kind of ooh. Not a good look, Heidi. Like I can understand where it's kind of like, oh, he's going through a rough time. I think I think he needs space. I need like like maybe separate myself and, you know, acknowledge that he he's not ready for this business move and kind of separate myself, but being like, "Ooh, yay, we he spent 3 hours crying. Let's let's just hop into it wasn't like, oh, I'm shocked that he was this upset. Exactly. Like, where you kind of, and I'm not knocking him down for being vulnerable. Good on him. Like, if that's where he was, like, um, I I really want to respect that because that is not an easy thing to do. But I, that's, that's a really red flag for me. If somebody who is, like, it's the same, I guess because I've seen my friends go through breakups and... If a guy or a girl, after they're crying and spilling their heart, the first thing they want to say is like, ooh, I can't wait to like swoop in and be in a relationship. It's like, who's your publicist, girl? <laughs> like, I, especially, I don't know. Th- this gives me like, you know, like those romance movies where it's like the girl that she has like a crush on, like, let's say the jock at school, but then she has like that best friend who's been pining for her and is just waiting for the jock to do something dumb so then he can like swoop in and pick up all the pieces that's like the, that's like the vibe i'm getting like where like she's painting out rachel being like oh i don't know her oh i sent this long text to defend dave and blah 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 but you know i i uh new boo will come in and swoop up and pick up all the pieces because that's what you know dave dave was in a, such a vulnerable spot but it's like woman you just met the man like be be a little respectful for um for like what the situation is it's kind of like she is she's just trying to like win this contest uh kind of mm. <laughs> look at dave look at that smile look at that <laughs> no like not even close and it, it was so yo did you spy that editing though it's like yeah he was distraught like he he was just just and look at this video of us together now he's happy because he's with me very very kind of mean girl vibes <laughs> i don't know so funny though but that like stuck because i was like i i just didn't find him i wasn't in the place he and i did not find each other attractive in that way um and he sent a really great thank you a kind text that you know next day and or that night and then it led to like one text a day I checked in, I think, a couple days later, and then... Ooh, at the same time, is he genuinely distraught, or was that part he had to play for this interview? Ooh, that's the, I like this conspiracy theory. Oh, boy, you said earlier you thought he looked better than you expected. Oh, yeah, I see. I'm not sure if you saw that, but she literally was like, oh, wow, you're so much hotter than what I thought. Like, oh, terrible. He would check in on me, and... It... Ladies and gentlemen. Natural. You are a natural. I'm natural. That has not caught a fish. Turned into a friendship that then t- turned into him inviting me to dinner. And like, I guess it was two weeks later, a couple weeks later. Um, and we created a really incredible friendship over distance that I think 
could not have been created if we lived close to each other. It's just not true because, um, or it's, it's not, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been possible. Oh yeah, basically like what she's saying is because they're long distance because they're like from uh, like different states and stuff. So like her thing is being like, oh yeah, the distance, you know, they, um, you know, it created, it created this distance that like it, it our, um, like, you know, absence makes like the heart grow fonder sort of thing. But what they lack to like understand is that they're both millionaires. So they literally like fly, you know, together and stuff like all the time. So it's like, are you really though? Any other way? Um, yeah. I think that's a good place to stop. I don't know. Yeah. We don't there we go. No more. No more. You're done. <laughs> Even the the cameraman's like, listen, Heidi, don't don't go into any more detail. Like that's it. Like we we got what we needed, sweetheart. Like let's not let's not like stretch this out anymore. <laughs> um, it's easy to be friends and lovey dovey when you don't need to live with someone and be face to face with their ugly sides. Or like in Heidi's case, where like she saw that he was less fugly <laughs> than on social media, I guess. Um. Yeah, it's, I do have to acknowledge that too. It's very true. Like there is part of it where it's almost like you can, with long distance, it's kind of like, for example, you can be like in a year long relationship, but the maturity is like three months, if you think about it, because you don't have like that frequency. And also you experience things less with somebody. It's not that you love them less or something, but it's more out of a sense of, uh, oh, the cameraman is facing secondhand embarrassment. He's just like, no, I'm done. We're done. Cut it. Cut it. He's like just making like the cut sign. But yeah, that's what I, I can at least say uh, from long distance. It's kind of like you have less experiences with the person, you know, and you go through less things. So like you have to make more of an effort to um, like plan out m more things together because you don't have like that immediate um like closeness with them so it's something to keep in mind <laughs> we can uh we can find out more later <laughs> yes we can I find out more later he was wearing i do remember that i remember what i was wearing not this video i'm not telling you anymore what? i'm done here come back next time <laughs> i mean what like she she doesn't remember what she was wearing okay yeah well well guys now we know <laughs> Like you guys asked, I've answered. Find out more later. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I see. You don't even know. There was even, there was even an interview she did with his son for Father's Day. Which, if you want to, if you want to talk about like salt, like for Father's Day, she interviewed his youngest son, and there was even a point where she just made it all about herself and then like the beginning of like where literally her son was like hmm, when did you and my dad start dating i'm not sure and it, oh it was so ooh ooh it was spicy it was spicy but we'll leave that for another time because i feel oh uh chumbi says i don't even know what i was wearing no one asked that but here let me plan that question to make it more about me <laughs> yeah that sounds yeah that sounds about <laughs> Oh, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I need to feed my family now. Um, oh, my gosh, we've been here for three hours. Oh, man. Heavens bless you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around, for my non-sewing, and for all of the uh, questions and discussions and stuff. We'll leave that for another time. Uh-huh. What a cliffhanger. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Um, I do. I have to feed my family now. I'm looking. Even my poor puppy, he's, like, crying behind the door, being like, please, mother, I haven't seen you in, like, three hours. That's a pretty big jump. But thank you guys so much for uh, coming on. Well, honestly, I am I put my uh, little note, so maybe I can find an interview of Nubu and her ex-boo, and then we can talk about that. We can talk about um, other things. And thank you guys so, so much for joining me. And okay, family lady, <laughs> see you again. Yes, I'll see you guys soon and we'll talk later. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have the great rest of your night, evening, morning, uh, whatever time you guys are in the world. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.